<laughs> Hello, I, as I assume we're live. Our countdown went into negative numbers almost there for a well, second. But it was is it really confusing. a number? <laughs> if you say zero? <laughs> Welcome, everybody. Welcome. It is, it is Friday zero. night, Friday the 13th here on twitch.tv slash saving throw show. And that means it is time for the season finale of <gasps> Wild Cards. Yes, yes, that's right. The season has come to an end on this, the most unlucky of days. Thank you for joining us, all you mysterious strangers out there in chat. My name is Jordan Caves Callerman. I am the ringmaster of these uh, uh, events, and we are very glad that you have decided to join us as Nightlinger's Traveling Carnival of the Extraordinary winds its way from settlement to settlement in the twisted plains of the weird west and all of the shadowy places in between we will be playing in deadlands the weird west the newest uh, edition of the uh, adventure setting or campaign world setting yeah. it's a great place from pinnacle <laughs> entertainment and we'll be using the savage worlds adventure edition rule set uh thank you thank you for joining us folks and thank you all for being here you players let's let's Ooh. meet you all Let's learn a little something about you folks. So uh, tonight, I would like to know from each of you, I would like your name. I would like your character's name. I would like a one sentence uh, summary of your character, what your character's deal is. And then I would like to know what the carnival means to your character. Ah. Uh, uh, you made a noise first. So oh. Celestina. Hello, uh, my name is Megan Caves and I play Celestina Moldovanu. Uh, Celestina is a witch who uh, protects the innocent and punishes the wicked. That's her whole thing. I don't know that she does it very well all the time, but that's her goal. Um, and what the carnival means to Celestina? Yes. Um, the carnival is life <laughs> to Celestina um, and everything that comes with that uh she spent most of her childhood and early adulthood kind of just trying to get by um trying to stay away from bad people mean people and trying to get the power to um take care of herself and not only did she find that with the carnival she also found the closest thing that she's had to a family since she was seven so it's it's pretty much everything to her all right okay so uh, it means quite a lot to celestina thank you very much for for sharing that who would like to go next i'll go next very well <clears throat> uh hi my name is don zook and i play buster buzz callahan and he is the he is the uh, the carnival's uh, scout, I guess. Uh, uh, um, I forget what we call that. Uh, the advance man. Advance man. Advance man. Um, He's the vanguard. Yeah, yeah. Um, and uh, basically, he's a cowboy bard. And um, the carnival uh, Ohana means family, and that's what the <laughs> carnival means to Buster. Uh, <laughs> Uh, it is it is his home away from home. It is the home he's always known, and uh, um, yeah, it he is he is extremely loyal to to his family basically. So it it uh, the opinions of everybody and the uh, all of the interactions basically to Buster everyone is a crazy aunt uncle cousin brother sister whatever and uh and he wants to get along with all of them in some way or fashion but but he treats them all as if they are family and uh yeah all right ohana does mean family and family means nobody gets left behind <laughs> uh, That's true. Uh, yeah. right yeah <laughs> moving on uh who would like to go next i'll go very well hi everybody my name is Jordan Pridgen, and I am playing Midas Buchanan, who is a, uh, he is a uh, weird scientist toy maker with a uh, clockwork little boy that he calls Christopher. That's his, his, like, his best invention that he spends most of his time working on. And he likes making toys. Um, 
And I think for I think for Midas, there's definitely like a family element to the carnival, but I also think it's it's just like it's it's like a second chance for him because his uh, his inventions were sort of like taken from him, and he was he lost all the credit for everything he had done with Schwartz and uh, back east, and he just wanted a chance to be able to like get his toys and his ideas out to children and the carnival like gave him that. And he's also like sort of a weird dude, um, just kind of in general. And at the carnival, that's like pretty fine. Yeah, yeah, it is pretty fine. That's true. <laughs> um, all right, so a, a second chance uh, after your first chance was stolen by Schwartz. F-A-O Schwartz. Damn him. Not, you keeping track I thought it was home. Ben Schwartz. Which it's Ben like, Schwartz, oh, no. yes. Yes, it's Ben Schwartz. <laughs> and then the worst. We should get him on here to play FAO Schwartz, which would be Oh, great. that'd be amazing. <laughs> yeah, let's do that. Uh, if anyone knows uh, Ben him. Schwartz, uh, yeah, give him a call. Uh, tell him to have his people are, call our people. Uh, and then last <laughs> but not least, we have... Hi, everybody. I'm Grav Gladi, and I play Victor Parrish. Victor Parrish is the most dangerous gun in the West, uh, friend or foe. And um, he is often seen as sort of the mad dog of the group. Um, and he could probably enjoy being called the mad dog because he would find that as a compliment and not Never an happened. insult. Um, Victor, the carnival to Victor is uh, a second chance um, at him trying to find a, a family that works, a family that actually does care about him and a family that uh, he would be willing to fight for when it came to that. Um, but uh, weird enough to go back to the dog thing, he was sort of a stray dog when he got here and he didn't have many choices left. So he's also using the carnival as a place to um, hide from those that might be looking for him. Okay, all right. Thank you all very much for sharing that information. And, and just to check in, because I feel like I've been doing this for a while, is it clear to everyone that when I do the like, who will go first and very well stuff that I'm channeling Olmec from Legends of the Hidden Temple? Is that clear? Because <laughs> no. I've been doing that yeah, it was this whole time. Who will go first? I, I will. Yeah. If you said very it like well, that. Sarah. <laughs> in retrospect, I, I now see it. Okay, thank you. I just wanted to, I wanted everyone to know that in my mm -hmm. head during all of that, I'm Olmec. Thanks for explaining that 10 seasons in. You are <laughs> welcome. Uh, we, we go back to the first episode and we're like, oh my God. <laughs> He's been Olmec right. the whole time. He's been building this the whole time. <laughs> the puzzle pieces. Um, so thank you all for introducing yourselves and to all of you mysterious strangers out there in chat, whether you've been with us uh, for the past 10 minutes and all of this craziness, you're just filtering in now. Welcome to you. Uh, we are uh, wild cards here on Saving Throw and we love to have you here. We love doing this for you folks. Uh, we hope you have a good time. We know we have a good time doing it with you. And if you are so inclined and you want to support the channel or the show and you want us to do bigger and better things and help us pay rent on the studio that we can't currently use, but will you know, hopefully one day get back to in some way, shape or form, please do consider tipping during the show. It means a lot to us. It helps us keep our bills paid, keep the, um, the socially distant lights on, and as a fun side effect, all cash tips and bit cheers over 100 bits go towards unlocking reward tiers, which can have sometimes small, sometimes large, sometimes super cool effects on the game or the campaign as a whole. To see what those are tonight, you can enter exclamation mark unlocks in the chat and follow the link. I will say tonight, we have a very special uh, top tier reward um the black judge himself clint black from pinnacle uh has uh has has pledged once more to work with your humble ringmaster to put together a passel of new customized options for the players here at the table but also if that does get unlocked we will be writing those up and posting them on the wild cards website for all to enjoy and potentially Ooh. use in their own games if they oh are so inclined I know Clint is very excited to do it. Uh, I am excited. Uh, hopefully you all are excited too. Um, also, 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 uh, if you sub, resub, or gift a sub during tonight's show, you can assign a curious ticket to either the players 
or to me, your ringmaster. These function as limited rerolls and go a long way towards helping the players survive and helping me kind of, you know, make sure that the, we're all getting our money's worth out of these dice rolls. <laughs> um, so if you uh, if you would like to sub, uh, please, we, we, we welcome it. We would love to have more people sticking around and joining the fantastic community that sprung up here around wild cards and just in saving throw at, in general, at large. Either one of those, at general, in large. Um, and I would also like to point out, since we had so much fun doing it before, uh, not only, not only did we get our, our new sub goal last week, which means at some point tonight, we will be serenaded with a dom song. Dom da dom dom dom. Oh, that's, um, hmm. what, what? Okay. That's tonight. Yeah. yeah okay. That's okay. tonight. Were you, you were, that is tonight? He knows. Um, <laughs> but uh, not only that, we have another one on offer tonight. I am making Dom really work to learn the ukulele. If we unlock that tonight, we will have a Dom song for the premiere of the next season of Wild Cards. Ooh. And since he will have so long to work on it, I have been told that it will be a full eight to 12 minute original composition. So Ooh. Dom didn't tell me that. I forget who told me that, but it was someone um, <laughs> who like, I felt oh, wait, like was I'm telling Dom that right now. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's huh. right. It was me. <laughs> huh. um, okay, I hope sorry. you're ready for an American Pie version of... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> so that's all that jazz. Uh, and then don't forget, folks, if you do want us to say silly or uh, you know sentimental or personally meaningful things that will be cool for you, but maybe not for anyone else at all, but definitely for you and so very definitely. worth it. Definitely. Don't forget... Yeah, if your name is Jeff, we will definitely make a really cool toast for you. If you uh, tip $15 or more, you can also uh, have us make a toast to whatever you would like us to do, provided it is, uh, you know, not just an, a very unpleasant thing that you want us to say. We probably won't say that, but uh, we, we will say most other things. <laughs> it's probably not uh, the best selling point for that. Hey, folks, speaking of selling points, um, do you ever feel like you're getting into a new campaign and you've created this brand new character that's real specific and so exactly the way that you want them to be. But then when it comes time to seek out a miniature for said character, none of them are quite exactly what you had in mind. Like, let's say you wanted a miniature for like a top hat wearing, purple coated, uh, wearing uh, ringmaster of a carnival. Those are hard to find unless, or yeah, uh, uh, Celestina is kind of keying out there, but I got I got little tiny Nightlinger. Uh, focus, focus, focus. Anyways, you can't see them super well here. I will try to remember to make that uh, post on social media, but check out heroforge.com where you can 3D visualize and customize your very own miniature with a dizzying array of options that are getting added all of the time. And now recently added full color options as well. If you don't want to paint, you can just have them and by them, I mean those machines. Do that <laughs> painting work for you. And it looks it looks. You can also dope, have guys. them paint it. They have professional painters. Yes, so they will I noticed that recently. As well. yeah. Yes, if you, if you do not want them machines to do it, uh, you can get a bespoke paint job from a professional <laughs> miniature painter. Uh, so a lot of options. Definitely check it out. You can enter exclamation mark Hero Forge in the chat to get some uh, the link and a little more information on that. And I think there was another thing. Friday the 13th. Friday the 13th, and uh, oh yeah, yeah. Um, so in a couple days, in uh, just two days from now, um, the the love of my life, uh, Megan Caves Callerman, will be celebrating her birthday. Uh, not tonight, oh. but in a couple <laughs> short days. And since we are all socially distanced and we can't get together to celebrate it, I thought if everyone was on board now, we could just go ahead and sing a quick happy birthday song to, oh, what's this? <laughs> musical accompaniment mm -hmm. oh my goodness if you are uh at, at home in front of your computer or television screen or phone wherever you're watching us feel free to sing along with us everybody Let's see how the very slight delay in this works with all this yeah be best great. of luck to us <laughs> dom you want to count us in no <laughs> wow well. happy, happy birthday, birthday to you, you. Happy, Happy birthday, birthday to you. 
There's no delay on Zoom. I don't know why you were waiting for me. It felt like there was. That was 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 probably the most difficult happy birthday song I've ever sung. But it it was worth it. Nailed it in one. We did it. My teeth are keying out just for you guys. Oh, cool. (laughs) Very upsetting. I know. It's a weird way to say thank you. You know what? I also have gifts, birthday birthday party favors for everyone in the form what? of the bennies that you get at the beginning of a show. Hey. Oh, does that so, mean we get more? Yes. No, no, it doesn't. It just means you get them now. And I am uh, putting a coat of paint on them that makes them seem like party favors. So <laughs> here they come, everybody. Celestina, three bennies for you. Oh, oh thank you. Uh, uh, well, here we go. Uh, Midas, three bennies for you. Oh. Ooh. Victor coming at you. <laughs> oh God, sorry. I put them in your esophagus. And Buster. Got it. He got him. He got him. Not to mention, I get a Benny for each one of you. That's one, two, three, four from my game master stash here. What do you say we head over to our uh, our, our page and see what's going on in the chat right now? Oh okay. my Butts. A lot of things. Oh, my butts. A lot of things are going on in the chat. I think we have some toasts to get through, everyone. So raise your cups and drinks of choice. Civil Savage 880 would like us to toast. In the year that was a decade, still can't believe we're already at a season finale. How <laughs> time flies. Set them up and knock them down. Thank it you very true. much, Civil Savage 880. This has been a, a slightly longer year than average. I'll agree with that. Toa 47 would like us to toast. The finale approaches. The dark assembles together at the center stage of death. Uh, Sum up. I hope not. And knock them down. Thank <laughs> you, Toa 47. Scary. How did you get uh, that line out of my prep notes? <laughs> I want to know. Neva and Omar would like us to toast. Happy trails to you until we meet again. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Set up and knock them down. Thank you very much, Neva and Omar. RD Armand would like us to toast. We've had a grand old time. Sorry to see it end for now, but I'm looking forward to the next time. Set them up and knock them down. Thank you, RD Armand. Thank you. Vampire 54 would like us to toast. Ah, nice. Ending on Friday the 13th. Oh, no. Quick, mysterious strangers, all we have to do is screams. <laughs> Get them up and knock them down. Thank you, Vampire54. I thought about screaming, but then I decided against it. It's good. Huh. Good idea. And that is the story of why I didn't scream. ETU Sir oh, Cat story. <laughs> would like us to toast. Step right up and see the greatest show on earth. P.T. Barnum, mm-hmm. please don't sue us. <laughs> Get them up. And knock them down. Thank you very much. And please don't sue us. Fractured you can avatar. Sue us if you want. I mean, P.T. Barnum can uh, only because I don't feel like that would hang. Uh, that would hold up in court. Fractured <laughs> Avatar thirteen would like us to toast. Is it bad when the troop returns from the void to find their boss is possibly more dangerous? Set them up and knock them down. Yeah. Not that I'm aware of. Fractured Avatar thirteen. Yeah, everybody's had that work experience at some point. Definitely, yeah. When you get back from a long break and your boss is suddenly dangerous. Mm-hmm. Escape Box Ted would like us to toast for future surprises and an awesome finale. Hi, Aaron. <laughs> hi, Aaron. <laughs> and knock him down. And hi, Aaron. <laughs> Artemis2814 would like us to toast. Happy Friday the 13th. What could possibly go wrong? Set we'll him find, up. We'll find out. And knock him down. Mm. I guess we'll find out. Yeah, we will indeed. Thank you, Artemis2814. <laughs> Walt Disney would like us to toast. Oh, shit. You guys can't say that. Every time you do, you owe me a quarter. That's yeah. 50 cents so far. <laughs> Set him up and knock him down. Your check is in the mail, Walt. Thank you very much. Means family. 
<laughs> it does. <laughs> Family means <laughs> no one gets left behind. <laughs> Thrithland would like us to toast. To the shock of Miss Louise, for the benefit of Mr. Kite, we see the entry of the gladiators by royal decree on a night in June leading to a Kentucky surprise. Stop it! And see the walking frog. I googled carnival slash circus music titles. <laughs> Set them up oh. and knock them down. Thank you very much, Brithlin. I like that. It was pretty good. I was like, this is a very deep cut from someone's home game. BSB Care One. <laughs> BSB Care One would like us to toast. Tonight's PSA is nice and simple. Wear your insert favorite expletive here mask. It is literally the least you can do to help protect your community. Set yeah. them up and knock them down. We'll agree with that, BSB Care. The My sooner you all wear your mask, the sooner we can get back into our studio. That's true. That's true. It's yeah. Everyone wear a mask so that we can go back to the studio. That's the only reason. That's that's it. Um, we also have some curious tickets to hand out, folks. We have one left over from the very end of last session that did not get awarded. So Puma Man Redux would like to give their curious ticket from last week to the players. Hey, thank you. So too would Desk like to give a curious ticket to the players? Hmm. Zarfin would like to give four curious tickets to the players. <gasps> yeah. yeah! What a haul. However, wow. made, made by Force and Escape Box Games would each like to give a curious ticket to me, the Ringmaster. Thank you very much for no, that. No, 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 no. No, no, Fair. no. Fair. Uh, <laughs> Lady Imago, Chem 13 Freak, Krieg Tanzer, and Smokebeard would each like to give a curious ticket to the players, yes. but... Don't thank him too quick, because Smokebeard oh. would also like to give a curious ticket to me, the Ringmaster. Mm -hmm. Thank you, thank you. Mm -hmm. Our VR podcast thing. would also like to give one to the Ringmaster. Thank you for that. Mm -hmm. However, Thrithland, Sojander, Holgaff, and Local Shrimp would each like to <gasps> give a curious ticket to the players. Yes! Yes. I should just buy a roll of actual tickets. That would be uh, that would be pretty cool. And I'll get a dispenser. And I'll make a ski ball machine. Um, and then have actual prizes that if we get enough, we can like turn in for. Yeah, and then just you quit my job an and actual open an carnival. Arcade. Yeah. Oh. Uh, Inex Spitter would like to give one curious ticket to me, the ringmaster. Thank you for that very much, Inex Spitter. Yes. But Mikey B. Sit Frog Sit. Would like to give one to the table. Thank you. <laughs> God bless you. I like the name. Uh, I love that name. Uh, Zombie Wolf seventy two would also like to give one to the table. Gina PDX would like to give one to me, the ringmaster. Thank you very much. Initiative Coffee Company would like to give one to the table. Yeah. And Cron the Mad would like to give one uh, to me, the ringmaster. Thank you very much for that. Thank you, folks. Um, a reminder, we will be doing toasts at the beginning of the show when we come back from our mid-show break, and if any remain at the end of the show, just to try and minimize the interruptions once we get the flow going. But first, several reward tiers have already been unlocked. Also this. Oh, yeah. uh, what? Oh, you're not seeing screen. No, I haven't yet. No, wait card? on that. Wait on that. No. Wait on that. We'll get to it after the unlock. Do you want to do it now before the unlocks to drive up the... the... No, we'll do it after the unlocks. Okay. Um, the first... A uh, tier that has been unlocked by the mysterious strangers in chat after the carnival performers did their performance. The hat was passed, and once it came back to you, the mysterious strangers had filled it with a Benny for each of you. <gasps> so, oh. hip your entertainers, say the mysterious strangers. That's a Benny for Celestina, for Midas, for Victor, for Buster, and one for your humble ringmaster. Thank you all very much for that. We have also unlocked a draw. A draw, draw, draw. She did it. Draw. Uh, however, Oof. it was not to be that it go to Celestina this evening. No. No, this evening, the quickest on the draw was Midas. Ah! Midas Buchanan. Tell me when to stop going through the cards. Hmm. Stop. You got teamwork. The oh. bonus from all support roles is doubled this round. Yeah. This applies to all allied characters. That's, oh, oh man. man, you can't see okay. that super. There it is, there it is. <clears throat> Get in that burning building, everybody. Then I have one goal tonight. I'm going to make five Christophers and have all of them support me. <laughs> I mean, if you can successfully do that, um, I think that would be pretty awesome. Except, you know, there's a maximum, you know, bonus of plus four. So, but still, still. I'm gonna break it. Very cool. Um, 
And uh, although I think that card would double the bonus. So a maximum bonus of plus eight, mm. I'm going to say, with that card in play. Otherwise, uh, otherwise, why even bother? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. So thank you for that. We have also unlocked the next reward tier, which is called the badasses we know them to be. Ah. Um, so I went back and forth on this one. I felt like, oh my God, cattail, <laughs> cattail. Just ignore it. It's just, it's the cat. Just ignore the tail. I can't ignore it. It's coming right for me. Tonight's <laughs> Wild Cards is filmed in 3D. <laughs> Whoa. Yeah, sorry. I forgot to tell everyone to put your glasses on. Uh, <laughs> poke them, poke them. Uh, no, uh, I decided to put this in your hands instead of keeping it in mine, you badasses. So because the mysterious strangers have unlocked it, you all tonight each get one ability, one chance to add a plus four to any role that you make, provided it is to do something cool, something badass, or something super clutch. Mm -hmm. So you do have to make your case that you will be applying it to this for that reason, but you do each get from the Mysterious Strangers in chat a chance to be the badasses that we know you all to be. Ooh. So thank you very much, Mysterious Strangers, for unlocking yes. that. This okay. is like a one-time formalization of the rule of cool. Um, <laughs> yeah. yeah, essentially. I mean, you know, sometimes I do this anyways, but this is mechanically represented <laughs> tonight uh, and you get to choose when to do it. So uh, thank you all very much in chat for unlocking that stuff. Um, I. Also think we have a really cool thing that we should mention up top before we get into the swing of things fully. We are doing for our finale of this first season, a very special giveaway this evening. Dom, would you like to tell the folks at home a little bit more about how that's gonna work? I would love to. I can't continue that. Um, no idea, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I don't really know what's going on. I have no idea. Um, if you type in exclamation point enter giveaway, as all one word, into chat, you will be entered into the giveaway to win a Norse Foundry Draugr dice set. Did I pronounce <gasps> that so right? Cool Draugr? Draugr? That sounds pretty. Draugr. Draugr. Uh, it's very cool. It, it looks a little bit like... Um, We've been posting pictures on social media, but if you haven't seen them... Yeah, it, it's very, very cool and looks sort of like this. I think the technical term is dope as hell. It's a black cube, uh -huh. everybody. Oh, okay. <laughs> wait, wait. Okay, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah they got that sort of like you dark see that? It's rainbow kind of, kind of iridescence to them. Bit, uh, they're yeah. super yeah. cool looking. They yeah. are Into very it. cool metal dice from I They're very them. cool. Um, you cannot win them, Megan. But, uh, but someone in chat could if they just enter exclamation mark, enter giveaway, all one word in the chat. Yep. They are entered. So in the don't giveaway. forget, tell everyone and. You, we will draw the winner at the end of the show tonight, and you must be in chat to win. So, if you don't think you can stick around to the end, uh, uh, ask for a surrogate to, uh, <laughs> to to be here when we do the giveaway. So, uh, no, it is not. I don't believe it's to U.S. residents only. I think it's to anybody. So, mm. there you go. Uh, okay. and then all right, okay, and while everyone is entering the giveaway, we have one final little fun thing to share with you. Uh, Megan, would you like to take this one? Yes! Um, so you guys heard of this game, this Doomtown game, which is pretty cool. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think we've talked about it before, but but I got an advanced copy of the Rosaline card! Ooh. Wow! Oh, yeah. And it's see through. It's, it's, it's a yeah. little see-through. You can see most of it. Um, yeah. it it's, it's very cool. Uh, and That's it's awesome. also, if you play Doomtown, which you don't have to to just get awesome value out of these cards, uh, but if you do, it's also, uh, Rosaline's a pretty good uh, a pretty good card there. Quite good. I would, I would happily include yep. her in a in an Outlaws deck. Oh yeah, no, she's she's starting posse material. So that, uh, that advanced copy came from our good friends over at Pinebox Entertainment, just to give you a little sneak peek of the Rosaline card in the most recent set. Uh, so definitely check that out if you're at all interested in the world of Deadlands and living card games. Doomtown is a lot of fun. Uh, so all of that stuff out of the way, I think it is time for us to focus in just a little bit. But before we go much further, I would like to take this time to remind everyone that Wild Cards is rated R slash TVMA 
slash uh, toddlers, no, no, uh, for <laughs> strong violence, language, uh, and dark and disturbing horror content. Basically, if you have seen it in a horror movie at any point, there is always a chance that it could show up on wild cards. We'd make every effort to keep things classy here on the show, but this is the weird West and these are savage worlds. But we hope that this won't send you scampering back to the safety of your well-lit homes and hearths. And instead, you'll join us on these dark and dusty trails. And at that, I think, folks, it's time to saddle up. Last time on Wild Cards, our intrepid carnies had finally made it back to the real world from their time being lost and wandering through the hunting grounds making it back and passing out from the sheer of exhaustion of regaining their corporeal bodies. They woke up three days later uh, on the morning of a setup day for the carnival. They learned they were in a town called Bulls Plains, uh, Montana, and that the show was going on that night. And not only that, uh, if they were up to it and ready, they were expected to perform in the show as well. They took some time to get their bearings around the carnival and kind of help uh, out a few squeaky wheels that had gotten uh, a little bit uh, squeakier during their absence. They also learned from uh, Leonard Hudson that some of the temporary hands that had been hired on to help out around the carnival, uh, he, he didn't fully trust. There were reports of uh, people sneaking about at night or listening at windows or moving things around. And he hadn't been able to prove anything yet, but he suspected some of the new employees. Um, also, also, uh, the crew learned that when they were lost in the hunting grounds, a, as soon as the carnival got back to the real world, they voted with an overwhelming majority to go back in and save the crew. However, Nightlinger himself overruled that decision, and they did have the chance to speak to him in private about that. Uh, although whether or not his answers were satisfactory to the group, I will leave up to them to decide. However, the night is coming on. The carnival is about to be in full swing. But before it is, I think Nightlinger, as is his custom, uh, is just going to engage in a little pre-show speech. So as we fall in through the sky to the small uh, grassy expanse of this section of Montana and the carnival now all set up as twilight approaches and the sun gets lower and lower in the sky, everything is ready and silent and expectant for a night of festivities and amazement and chills. And as the carnival folk gather together in front of Nightlinger's black wagon, the man himself steps out through the front door dressed in his full regalia and greets his family. All right. What a bunch of smiling, happy faces I see out there. Now, we got a very special show to do tonight, folks. A very special guest may be joining us this evening, and I hope that you will all be on your absolute best behavior. We stand to gain quite a bit if we are able to impress our visitor. Now, I don't wanna put too much pressure or stress on anyone. I won't single anything out. I'll just let you know that perhaps walking among the, the rubes that visit us this evening may be one who is uh, looking for something to really put him up over the edge. And uh, I think it would be best if everyone treated each and every patron of our festivities tonight as though they were this very important guest. But I have every faith that that will happen. After all, we are all once again together. Our Wonder Squad has returned. Let us get a nice hand for them, ladies and gentlemen. And everyone in the carnival turns to look at the four of you and starts clapping and cheering. Uh, Nightlinger too smiles beatifically from up uh, the top of his stairs and claps for you all as well. And they have been gracious enough to agree to resume their positions in the carnival and on the showcase this very evening. 
not even missing a step. These four know the truth of that old showbiz adage, the show must go on and go on it shall. One final word this evening before we begin. Earlier, as I was taking my walk around the grounds just to get a last look at everything, I noticed that the smell of popcorn is on the air. And I know you all know, do not engage, do not interfere if you see her, just the cost of doing business. Now, with that unpleasantness out of the way, what say we kick this shindig into high gear? And he makes a flourish with his hands as the strings of electric light bulbs plugged into no discernible power source light themselves up around the outskirts of the carnival. Uh, Eustace activates all of the attractions and everyone gets to their places as the folks from Bull's Plain start wandering across the early evening night and making their way towards a night of frivolity and distraction. And we meet them first, gathered up as we often do, around the first person that they see when they come to the carnival, and that, of course, is our lovely, golden, sonorous-voiced Buster Buzz Callahan. As the crowds start filtering in and folks start lining up to get their tickets to the night show, uh, Buster, what say you regale them uh, with a little bit of a, of a tune just to keep their spirits up and uh, get them in the mood for what it is they might be in store for tonight. How about it, Buzz? You got a ukulele song for us? Yeah, I do. Um, now? <laughs> I think uh, I think now would be a great time as the okay. crowds start coming in. People start wandering around, and uh, Buster, you've you've been working on uh, this one for uh, a little bit, just, just just tinkering around with it as you step up onto your platform. Well, this uh, one, uh, uh, folks, uh, I want to tell you a little story, a little story that uh, might be might be hard to believe for some of you, but. Uh, God's honest truth, this ha happened to me and a few of my friends here at this carnival here, and you are in for some treat as you uh, come into things and experience them for yourselves here. So uh, uh, I will just uh, play you this little, little ditty I wrote, and uh, I hope you enjoy it. Have, have fun at the carnival. Have, have fun at the carnival. A crowd starts to gather at Buster's uh, shouted words and his, uh, his exuberant actions and, and, and voice brings them in as he begins to strum. Oh, again, what is the name of your guitar? Uh, Desiree. Desiree. Yeah. Desiree. All right. In a dark, deserted graveyard, no wind in my side. Manitou started chasing us, rising up through the blight. Up ahead in the distance, I see nothing but black. Opened a secret door in the ground. We must escape this attack. There she stood in the clockwork. I heard Midas yell. Then I was thinking to myself, this could be heaven or this could be hell. Then she explained herself and she showed us the way. We had to find a magic kid named Lottie. I thought I heard her say, Welcome to the hunting grounds of Deadlands. Such a haunted place. Such a haunted place. Such a haunted space. <laughs> Plenty of graves at the hunting grounds of Deadlands. Anything you fear. Anything you, you can find it here. <laughs> uh, I'm sorry, I gotta scroll down here because I didn't bring all the music up with me. All right, here we go. Yeah, this is where the drums kick in. <clears throat> uh, and 
We hiked across the land till we found a cave. Victor got hit by a rock and then he he failed to save. Midas kissed his wounds and brought him back to life. And the song. And Celestina used her icy bolt and she just barely killed the beast. Lottie turned out to be a dog, <laughs> one who knew our fate. And we followed her to something I saw that was the Grey Gate. They wouldn't let us pass until we found their chalice. <laughs> Celestina summoned a boat that swayed as I heard her say, yeah. Welcome to the hunting grounds of Deadlands. <laughs> oh, such a haunted place. Such, such a haunted, haunted place. place. Such a haunted space. Oh god, I've lost. Okay, plenty of graves at the hunting grounds of Deadlands. <laughs> Anything you fear. Everything you fear. You can find it here. A monster in the starry sea. Oh, oh god. Uh, tossed our boat about. Shipwrecked on an island we were. Met by an empty scout. They were pretty scary, but they showed us the way to their battle with the enemy. The gray. We uncovered a plant that was alien to this land. When we told the king, he wasn't sure if we should be banned. As we figured out, it was the squire's wrong. A giant pumpkin-headed man broke through and Midas was gone. After saving Midas, we went back to the grave. With the hollow resonance in us for a, a rainy day. Who said the pumpkin man, you <laughs> may not believe. <laughs> you can check out any time you like, but you can never believe. Welcome to the hunting towns of Deadlands. <laughs> oh, such a... Oh, God. Well, that's such a haunted, not, it's not lovely at all. Such a haunted place. <laughs> such a haunted place. <laughs> such a haunted space. That's not right. Haunted space. There we go. Sorry, got to scroll down. I got more. Okay, okay. <laughs> Here we go. Plenty of graves at the haunting grounds of Deadlands. Anything you fear. Anything you fear. Anything you, fear. Anything you, fear. you can find it here. Guitar okay, solo! Yeah. Okay, and yeah, then there is a 12 on. minute guitar solo. That is yeah. <laughs> seven more minutes. 100%. Uh, that is a Buster Callahan original right there. 100%. Uh, a Buster. Ray. Well done, well done. Yeah. And uh, that goes Bravo. out to all of you in chat who unlocked that, that last week. It also goes out to the assembled crowd who are standing here and listening to it. Buster, can you make a performance roll for me, please? And because you performed it so well for us, can you add a plus two to that roll? Uh, sure. Aced it. Nice. Yes, you uh, did. That's a 13. On Friday the 13th? With oh. a couple raises. Oh, it's a great, it's off to a great start. As you finish your song, the, the crowd seems a, a little confused almost, and they start clapping. You can tell that they liked it, although the music may have been a bit uh, beyond what they're used to, but don't worry, Buster. Their, gran their great grandkids are going to love yeah. it. <laughs> 
Well done, Buster. As the crowd uh, claps and applauds, they now seem to be more in the frame of mind and uh, the mental space for the night that awaits them. So as they start streaming in through the front gates and into the carnival proper, um, we see uh, Midas manning uh, his, his little cart. And uh, after Buster has done his bit of music and song and dance at the beginning, the next thing that people like to see when they come in through the gate is that mechanical marvel that belongs to my spew cannon, the one, the only, Christopher. Now JP has written a whole song too. <laughs> Everyone's okay. doing a song tonight. So Plenty of room at the Christopher. <laughs> what is uh, what is the little performance that Christopher does for the folks that come in through the carnival? What does he greet them with? Or, or what do you and Christopher greet them with as they come in to behold the sights? So despite the fact that the vast majority of the time, Christopher just says, I'm Christopher. He also has like, a, a small amount of other phrases that he just like can throw out at people that are like, oh. would you like to be my friend? And things like that. And when we put in the like this setup performance mode, he'll just be like, I'm Christopher, let's be friends. <laughs> Hi, and I've got him um, just doing backflips. Okay, <laughs> all right. There's fact, a snake in my boot. I told him to perform <laughs> and he has just started doing the backflips and I haven't been able to, to get him to like, tone down the backflips a bit and like do his other acts. It's a feature, not a bug. Uh, so Midas, as the folks start coming in and you have your toys and games and wares all ready and available for the children and the young at heart, Christopher is doing his performance. Can we get a performance roll for Christopher, please, Midas? Yes, but give me just one sec. My dice, I accidentally left on the other side of the room. One sec. <laughs> okay, he left his dice on the other side of the room, but never fear. <laughs> I thought he said- Midas, what? And the other silverware. I was like, mm -hmm. I don't think he said that. I don't think he said that. <laughs> but maybe. I'm back now and I have my dice. All right. So give us a performance roll for Christopher. Uh, He got a four. A four? Well, is... I guess an ace, so. Oh, yeah, if it's a d4. Because it is it... a d4. So it's a five. A five is a success plus one. So Christopher uh, is indeed doing doing his uh, his standard mechanical dance. His unblinking eyes just staring out at everyone, and the the um, aut automatic smile stretching his face as from time to time, in between his shouts of "I'm Christopher," he looks at someone directly and sort of wanders over to them. Will you be my friend? And then before they have a chance to react, he goes down uh, into a deep squat and starts making a <laughs> clicking, vibrating noise and then leaps up into the air and at the top of his arc, tucks into a backflip and then lands and puts yes. his arms out. Yes, I'm Christopher. Yes. <laughs> Midas. Midas, even though he's like tried to get him to do other things, is still like a little worried and then excited every time he lands the backflip. Yeah, it's, it, it's it's that little bit of just not wanting him to fail, not wanting him to be crushed um, emotionally, not literally. Although if he well. did fall the wrong way, that would take a lot of repair. <laughs> As you are watching Midas and beaming internally and externally with pride, you see a streaking green luminescent object come out of the crowd with a little faint whistle and strike Christopher right on the side of the head and then bounce back into the hand of what looks like a young boy with a crowd of, uh, of smaller boys and girls around him. And they all laugh and giggle as he starts tossing this little faintly glowing green ball up in the air. Christopher, for his part, just kind of turns and regards them dispassionately from a distance as they uh, continue to laugh and cheer. <laughs> nice, <laughs> nice shot, Teddy. That was, that was great. <laughs> I know. I got him like right in the side of the face. <laughs> huh, well, you, you, you all did, did that, that, that was, was a very good throw, uh, but I please would request that, that, that you don't throw anything else at, at Christopher because he is a, a very delicate contraption. The one who seems to be the leader of the crew, uh, his name, Teddy, you gather, looks looks at you and sort of puffs up his chest in that bratty way that young children sometimes have when they're dealing with adults who they feel they don't have to respect. Uh, well, actually, it probably wouldn't hurt him all that much. It's just a toy for fun. These things are all over the place now. They're like the hot new thing that just came to town in the catalog. Schwarbs! 
and he shows it to you. A, a little <laughs> green ball uh, that seems to have a lot of uh, bounce to it and a slight luminescence and even a little whistle as, as it goes. Yeah, they're new from like some toy guy named F.A.O. Schwartz. And the coolest part is if you bounce them and it's not too far away, they go right back to your hand no matter what. Schwarbs are the best. And all the kids are like, yeah, Schwarbs. Schwarbs? Oh, no. Uh, yeah, Schwarbs, old man. We wouldn't expect you to know. It's something that's just for kids. <laughs> okay. Now that that schwab that you have there, that is is hack work. Look 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 at how small it is. Look, look how slow it moved when when it was bouncing. Now this, and he pulls out like a couple of you cannon balls in one hand. Now this, this is a toy. What is that? Like some kind of knockoff schwab? <laughs> no. Midas goes. Bam! And throws two of the Buchanan balls down as hard as he can. And, and uh, what, I, what, what I want to do is actually do a jury-rigged cast of Bolt to just have the effect of basically having them bounce off the thing and just go as high as possible into the air. Okay. All right. Um, so if you're going to jury-rig it, I believe that's a weird science roll with a, is it a negative one or a negative two? I need to look it up. I think it's a negative one, but I'm not a hundred percent sure. Let us say it's a negative two. It is a minus two negative penalty. Two. Yeah, then yes, that's fine. Okay, I am fine with that. You're trying to bolt the sky, essentially. As long as you're not killing these kids, I'm sure that's fine. Uh, and there, no one's a, going to frown on it. I mean, there's a pretty low chance of these kids dying. There is a non-zero chance of the kids dying, though. Okay, but that's okay. almost always true. Children are fragile. Don't crit fail. <laughs> uh, I got a nine, which is a seven. Can I uh, actually get a curious ticket reroll on that? Because I want uh, to... you can indeed. You want that raise, huh? I do. I really want that raise. I want it bad. Okay, oh, I aced on the d six. Can I do it? Uh, okay, so that's a five. So that is an eleven. So that's a nine. A nine, which is a success with a raise. So Midas, in a frenzy to prove the, the superiority of Buchanan balls, you um, just, you pull them out of your pocket and then uh, just finding a little bit of loose powdered ghost rock on your shoulder, you blow it onto the balls, which makes them uh, light up even brighter and more intensely. As you slam them to the ground with a loud whistling sound, they hit the earth and shoot up into the beginnings of the night as the blue light just goes up and up and up. Eventually it goes so far that it's completely out of sight. And the kids stand there and just look up with their mouths open. But like, do they come back though? They, 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 they could if I wanted them to, but-, but Cause they... a swarm will come right back to your hand if you bounce it. <laughs> All right, tell you what. I, I, I will give you two Buchanan balls for that Schwab, and it, it will be, it, it will be a much better experience. This is free. Are you talking to Teddy, the, the, the largest, brattiest leader of the group? Yes. <laughs> um, I don't know. My dad bought these for me. He'd be pretty mad if I didn't come home with them. Maybe four Buchanan balls for a, a Schwab would be... All right, all right. four Buchanan okay. balls. Um, <laughs> all right, I was gonna make you try and make a persuasion roll, but you immediately capitulated <laughs> to the children. So uh, I think there's no need for that. <laughs> Who wants this? All right, fine, yeah, I'll give you a Schwab. I have like four more at home anyways. And he hands it over to you and then stands there expectantly uh, waiting for his Buchanan balls. Uh, Midas wiggle, waggles his finger at him for one minute and goes back to his like little stand and pulls a, a, a handful of Buchanan balls out from like his uh, prize chest Dash. in the back. Okay. And gives four of them to them. So these don't come back to you when you bounce them? <laughs> well, if you bounce them with, with the right angles, they certainly will come back to you. Oh. But no, they but they bounce far further and and far more effectively, and they glow when when they are bouncing. Schwarbs glow. 
<laughs> yeah, I guess this is okay. Maybe we can play around with them, and if we lose them, it won't be that big of a deal. Thanks, mister. And and as they as they start to walk away, you hear a couple kids go like, you really traded your Schwarbs for some of those lame cannonballs? And the guy, you hear Teddy go, the guy seemed really sad. Uh, and as they... <laughs> As they walk away, and internally you feel that hatred for FAO Schwartz rising in you, Christopher just watches them go, and then turns to you, Midas. Schwarb! Oh, no. <laughs> Christopher, if you ever say that again, I will dismantle you. Do you understand? And then Christopher kind of like uh, starts toddling off uh, mechanically around the corner of the, uh, the the wagon that you're operating to make you chase him, Midas. Uh, he's a teen. I, I, Christopher, I'm 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 sorry. I got mad at you. I I I, I, I didn't mean it. It's just, and he, Chris, I'm and Christopher. Midas kind of follows. Schwarb. Schwarb. I'm Christopher. No, my, my I, I would really Schwarbs. prefer that that you don't say that any. And as Midas continues to chase Christopher in a circle around uh, the wagon, begging him to please stop saying Schwarbs, uh, we follow uh, the the trail of various carnival goers making their way through the entertainments. And uh, we find Victor Parrish heading over to Celestina's tent uh, to gather her so that you can both go over and start prepping for the showcase of spectacle and uh, Victor, as you walk over towards Celestina's dark and smoky tent where she plies her fortune-telling ways, uh, what do we see? Uh, what is the scene inside of the tent? I'll let both of you tell me this together, if you'd like. At I once. think, <laughs> I'll write it once, say the exact same thing. Uh, Celestina is trying to wrangle a few of her more uh, difficult ravens that are pissed off that she was gone for so long and now all of the sudden want she wants them to perform a show and so she's just standing in there she's like uh i know i know i was gone for a time but they, 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 don't wait why are you pooping on that don't, oh no that, that's my pillow this you never do this you told me you're the nice one i say I, there's a lot of shit around here Oh, yes. Well, they're mad because I was lost in hunting grounds for so long and now they're pissed off because I don't understand that it wasn't my fault. So, yeah. How are you? Uh, I'm fine, fine. Nobody's shitting on me today, so. Well, if you stay in here long enough, I got the hisco over here, Will, so. <laughs> Yeah, no one's looking at me funny, so uh, we should get going. Oh, oh, is it time already? Yes, okay. Whoever is going to do show today, then come along. A, a chorus of squawking breaks out from the ravens, uh, and just as it is becoming too cacophonous to bear, Vika gives out a very sharp and short squawk that instantly puts uh, the rest to silence. Oh, thank you, Vika. You're so helpful. See, Welcome. you should be like Vika. Hey, Celestina, yes. I don't know if I ever asked you this, but why ravens? Why not the ravens? Well, because mm. they're birds that shit everywhere and they're... You think parrot better? You want to talk about shitting everywhere? <laughs> Get yourself a parrot. And what then the... it also talks at you all the time. What the hell's a parrot? He's bright bird that cheats everywhere. Oh, well, I mean, at least that bird's bright. These are all, I mean, I kind of like the They're dark. dark like feel... my soul. My, uh, you're not my this, <laughs> Victor. Uh, uh, yeah, dark like, that's real uh, goth or whatever. Um, right, this the brand I sell. <laughs> right. You too, just... really. You do good with Raven. You want one? Take that one, that one mean. Oh, I mean, what do, what do they taste like? No, you cannot eat my raven. I'm fucking with you. I'm fucking with you. I'm kidding. Let's go. As okay. you both are are finishing up this interaction and getting your things together and uh, preparing to head over to the showcase tent, will both of you please make a notice roll for me? Yes. Yes. My wild eye. Beast it. Beast it. 
Oh shit, it's a 13. <gasps> and I got a five. We got a five and a 13. A th- yeah. The curse of fives continues on Friday the 13th. On so Friday, Friday the five. Um, Celestina, you are a bit distracted by uh, trying to figure out which birds are going to be the most uh, res- respectful tonight. Mm-hmm. Um, you, you're getting kind of a mischievous feeling from your birds, but you're, you're trying to figure out which one is going to be the most well-behaved. Victor, as you stand there and wait, listening to Celestina talk to all of her birds in the cage, you just kind of spread your gaze out over the crowd that's moving around about through the carnival, and you see a, a figure moving kind of rapidly through the middle of the crowd. It's someone you don't recognize. Uh, one of the one of the new hands for the carnival, but he's making a beeline for a, a little cluster of tents over on the outer rim of the carnival, and he looks <clears throat> around. You got a thirteen on your roll, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, he he kind of looks about suspiciously for just a moment before ducking in between a couple of of tents and out of sight. Uh, do I know what those tents are? Uh, yeah, you would know what those tents are. Uh, it's it's um, just a couple of one of them is basically for for storage and it's just done up to uh, make it look like it's part of the carnival. The other two uh, sell like uh, trinkets and and odds and ends. There's just a couple of uh, of, of merchants that sell little little weird things over there. Hey, Celestina. Yes. One of those new uh, hands is doing something fishy. What are they doing fishy? What is it? I mean, I I guess I don't know if it's fishy, but what they told us to keep an eye on them, keeping an eye on them, and they're doing something that I don't like. Oh, well, we have a little bit of time, right? Before show, let's go check it out. Yeah. Yeah, why don't we? I mean, show can't start without us, right? Well, it's true. And the longer we make people wait, the more excited they get. Pretty sure that's the way it works. I mean, um, it, the show technically could start without you, but it can't end without you. Uh, you guys you guys go towards the end of the showcase. That's about the same thing. All right, let's go check it out. Okay. Birds, you go to stage. Vika, you stay with me. <laughs> You're sending the birds to the <laughs> tent? <laughs> Yeah, they know where to go. Wait, okay. can, can they just put on my hat and be me for the night? Uh, sure. I don't know they know how to shoot gun, though. Oh, it's really so easy. established just... that the birds are angry poopers right now, right? <laughs> <laughs> yes. I've been known to take an angry shit now and then. <laughs> that one guy who was pretty good with the gun, he was he was interesting. Kind of <laughs> looks like 12 to 15 ravens in a coat and a hat, though. Um... So, uh, Vika, or not Vika, Celestina, will you please give me a persuasion roll uh, to make sure that your birds go anywhere near the direction you want them to go? Yes. Do I get, you know, like a plus? No. Nope. <laughs> if anything, you should get a negative because we've already established they're in an angry shitting mood. Well, I'm very persuasive when it comes to my birds. Uh, mm-hmm. that is a 15, so... Shit. <laughs> a 15! So, Celestina, your birds can be disrespectful, they can be mischievous, but when it is time to perform, you are the Lady of Ravens, and you brook no disagreement from your birds. So when you tell them to go to the stage, those birds fly to the right place. Ravens, they take go off to the stage! times 12 or 15. <laughs> All right, so Vika remains with you. The rest go off towards the showcase. What are you two going to do? Uh, I want to uh, lead in the direction of where that uh, <clears throat> hand was. Okay, um, and are you trying to uh, like approach stealthily or are you just heading over there? No, nope. I, I mean, I yeah, I'm just going to barge over. Uh, I don't think, I mean, I, I guess Celestina, if you wanted to sneak around, I don't feel like... Nah. Okay. I follow your lead, Victor. You know how to shoot people, so. That's right. All right. I pull out my gun. Get ready to shoot him. It's <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, take care of business. <laughs> so, Victor, uh, you go stalking across the carnival grounds over to the uh, area of tents where you saw uh, that one hand disappear behind. The merchants plying their wares in their tents give you a, a knowing, friendly nod as you walk by, but you duck back behind the tents, uh, Celestina close on your tail. And as you get to the back of the storage tent or, or, or around to the side of it rather, you see that, that unfamiliar hand 
the bear fell from the ceiling again. I'm sorry. What bear? Um, this is ah! the second. This is the second week in a row I have been attacked by a, uh, a, a drop sun bear. ceiling bear. I don't have anywhere to put them. It's it's an Australian <laughs> drop bear. <laughs> oh man. Okay. Ceiling bear. I heard that noise. Eh? Where were we? Yes. So you get around to the side of the tent. You see that unfamiliar hand uh, kind of leaning into the shadows behind the storage tent. And as you start walking a little closer, you see him go, what? What? And he turns and sees you. And with a with a start, he says, oh, hey, H- hello. Um, what do, do you do you uh, do, do, do you folks need need something? Need something uh, lifted or moved or changed? Yes, we do need something. We need to know what you're doing. What I'm doing? Yes. Well, uh, nothing. I, I was just, uh, you know, I'm still, I'm new, so I'm still just trying to get my, my bearings. This is only the, the second time that I've been around, you know, during full operation. So I thought, is this back where we're supposed to go to, to get uh, extra nails for uh, for the, the signposts that we're supposed to be uh, putting up? I, I, I'm, I'm all turned around. Uh, could I cast elemental manipulation to light my hand on fire? <laughs> I mean, anytime you want, you can cast elemental Great. manipulation to light your hand on fire. I Great. don't always recommend it as the best course of action, but anytime you want, you can do it. Uh, yeah, I want to do this thing. All right, uh, give me a <laughs> spell casting roll, Celestina. Uh, where's the right die? Here it is. Ooh, I aced it. Nice. 16. Kill him. 16. Wow, you guys are really knocking it out of the park with these rolls tonight. Uh, 16 <laughs> is a success with three raises, I believe. Um, so that is uh, no no small and no flickering, faint little ball of fire that you summon to your hand, Celestina. As you whisper words and the shadows deepen on your face and around you, a glaringly bright ball of frenzied flame spreads to life on your hand, flickering and heightening the shadows on your own face as it goes. Now, I'm pretty sure that if you work as a hand here at the carnival, and if you've been working here as long as you have, you would probably know exactly where you go to get nails or whatever it else it is that you're looking for. Well, uh, you know, that's that, that a very fancy trick miss very uh very impressive no no I, as i said i i'm i'm new i'm just a temporary hire while you're in uh in the area this is only my my, my second time while the carnival's operating so oh and that's why you meet this person you meet back here to attend yes to help i i meet nobody i ain't oh. meet nobody so you just talk to yourself then a little crazy when I'm looking for nails, I do, such as things uh, like, like, where are those nails? Or where was it that the nails were kept again? Or, oh, well, this- I'm sorry, um, Mr. Whoever you are, do you know who this is? And she points at, with her flaming hand <laughs> at Victor, you know who this is? I, by, by reputation and and I, mean, I I've seen the 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 show bills I, this this here must be the 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 dead man <laughs> yes well you know it's, we have to keep him on leash no offense Victor he just really needs to shoot people in general and sometimes you know if a hand goes missing here and there or if they cause problem well. It's not such a big deal, right? But if Hand is uh, very truthful about what sneaking they do, then maybe, maybe we hold Victor back. Victor, do you have your gun out and pointed at him? Yeah. Okay. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. I, I, I think there's a, a miscommunication. I, I, I'm just looking for the nails. Yeah, you say this, but huh, I don't know. When you originally said it, it was. It was uh, looking for this or nails. Uh, it seems like something you just uh, came up with, personally. But what do I know? I just lady who lights hand on fire. You know okay. what I know is, you look like a rat, scurrying oh. around this place looking for well, what do rats look for? Shit. Now, 
I'm the exterminator at this here carnival. There's an infestation, they call me, and I take care of it. I'm gonna give you one guess on how I take care of that problem. Um, is it with lethal, lethal force, Mr. Deadman? Now, that's a funny way of saying bullets, but yeah, it's bullets. Uh, I, I, ain't, I ain't no rat. Um, I, I, I'm just looking for nails. You know this ain't where you find nails, boy. Well, I do now, so I, I, I suppose I, I should I should be on on my way to the 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 other side of the carnival grounds where the the nails most definitely are. As I said, I was turned around. So, what is your name? Uh, my name uh, Edmund. Edmund, yes. Well, I hope you find those nails and also find yourself not snooping about in places you don't need to be. Uh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. I, I, I didn't mean to ca cause no offense. I, I'm, I'll just be on my way and, and, and get those nails. Um, best, best of luck with the show t today, folks. Uh huh. And so he, he has to get through both of you to get to where <laughs> the nails are. So he, he just sort of, kind of tentatively takes a step forward and tries to sidle past the, the flaming. Uh, fireball in Celestina's hand and then feels the, the metal of Victor's gun barrel just graze his back as he kind of sidles between <clears throat> you two. <laughs> All right, yeah, I, I, I best be off. I think the, the, the show's probably starting soon, so, so uh, maybe, good luck. And he look at him. hustles off into the carnival, not looking back over his shoulder. Well, even that once. was fun, Victor. Uh, what do you think he do back here? I don't know. I mean, this ain't where you find nails, right? I don't actually know. I don't did you, know either. <laughs> did you all want to go around to the back of the tent uh, where yeah. he was? Uh, okay, so you both, now that he's gone, you, you kind of turn uh, the corner and just peer around behind the storage tent in the, the shadows and darkness back here. Um, you don't really see anything. Except for a big pile of hardware supplies. <laughs> oh man, but no nails. It's all just fasteners and bolts. Um, I mean, could I like look around for? I mean, I don't. I don't have survival, but look around for any kind of traces of like someone having been here recently or anything like that. Is there anything like that that I sure. could do? Yeah, give me a notice roll. Okay. <gasps> I aced it. Mm. Ten. 10. 10 is a success with the raise. Celestina, um, you don't see anything, but just you get the distinct impression somehow that maybe there was someone here and, and very recently. Something about it, it's just a feel more than anything else. And as you're feeling that, you just catch a little whiff on the wind of, of something that smells like stale sweat and tobacco. Mm. And then it's you gone. You smell these. He smells like somebody was smoking after a run. I don't smell anything. Do you want to make a notice roll, Victor, or do you just not smell anything? I mean, I trust your nose, Celestine. If that's what you smell, that's what you smell, but it that could be anybody. Nose. It's true. It could be. That could be me for all I know. You're smoking. I mean, sometimes. Oh, yes. Well, I, I don't know. I don't see anything particularly suspicious, except for Edmund was pretty suspicious, but we couldn't get anything off of him. I even lit my hand on fire. Yeah, I saw that. Yeah. Um, and everyone Mitika. smokes. Babies smoke. It's good for their lungs. Babies smoke. <laughs> um, so you need Vika for the show? I mean, she usually a big part of show, but she has understudy. Why, why you ask? Oh, I'm just thinking it might be good to get some eyes on that kid. Oh, this is a good idea, yes. Uh, Vika. Oh, where are you, Vika? Vika, get out of this bag. Okay. <laughs> uh, Vika please. was in a bag. Smoking cigarettes. <laughs> <laughs> Go. <laughs> Vika, you're not smoking. Not good for you. You burned. Uh, yes, Sorry. please. <laughs> Please go follow this man who over there, that one who look a little scared and confused. Follow him, yes? And then yes. Uh, I'll have Haska stand in for you for sure, unless you get back in time. 
Haskin, not good. I agree, you much better, but you know, this is important, and I only send the best for important missions. Fa! Vika seems a little disappointed, but still um, kind of bristles a little bit at the ego stroking there uh, and gives you, you a nod that. and takes off. Extra big treats when you get back. Big a treat! <laughs> so you know what those birds are saying to you. Hey, well, that one at the very least. The other ones, I can mostly read their body language now and also Vika help. But yes. How'd you learn to talk to a bird anyways? It's a magical thing, you know? It's, it's, it's uh, well, this bird, Vika, she's very smart. That part of it. And it is just this connection that we have. All right, yeah, I could see that being useful. It's quite useful. She can fly and see lots of things, although she doesn't speak very clearly, so you have to guess sometimes. You think maybe you could train her to shoot a gun? Oh, she don't. She doesn't have thumbs or fingers. I think this would be hard, but I suppose they yeah. are quite clever. And Victor's really wanting those twelve to fifteen ravens to be his understudy <laughs> in the uh, in the show. Um, not to put too fine a point on thing, but Edmund was correct. It is uh, getting close to time for the showcase of spectacle. So uh, the two of you, I, I assume, if there's nothing else you want to do here, would head over towards the showcase tent. Yeah, yeah. let's do it. All right, so Celestina and Victor, you head off uh, towards the back entrance of the tent where the performers uh, prepare and get ready. Um, and as uh, as luck would have it uh, tonight, uh, Buzz, you're typically a part of the showcase. Uh, the musical accompaniment, and I believe we talked about this before, but I, I just want to double check. Um, also, uh, the introducer of each act and sort of serve as the narrator of the showcase <clears throat> spectacle. Is that correct? Oh, I think you're muted, Buzz. That's correct. That is correct. All right. And uh, Midas, you ordinarily don't have much to do at all with the showcase of spectacle. However, uh, Eustace tonight, having just very recently exercised the gremlins from the discombobulator, has committed himself to staying in his motorized chair over there at his post and keeping an eye on that machine for the first sign of trouble. So for tonight, the job of operating the spotting light has fallen to you this evening, uh, Midas, which means you have to climb the somewhat rickety ladder to the top of the of the catwalk and, and shine the spotting light down on the performers as they go. Um, are you okay with heights, Midas? Yeah, I'm not particularly uh, afraid of them. I mean, I did fall pretty far somewhat recently, so I might be a little more shaky about it than normal. But more like, or less shaky. It's hard to know how fear works. Yeah, I mean, it worked out. <laughs> Um, even so, you didn't build this and neither did Eustace. So you're uh, always a little bit suspect of the engineering of this ladder catwalk system. But as it is getting time for the show, uh, Buster finishes up his set at the front of the carnival. Now that it seems most of the folks in town have now made it their way inside. Uh, everyone is spreading out, heading towards uh, the different attractions milling over towards the showcase of spectacle, which is a very big event for the evening. Um, and uh, as you all walk over there, Nightlinger comes uh, swaggering over with a very, very elderly gentleman in tow. Ah, Buster, may I have a word, please? Uh, yes, of course. And, and Midas, I, I suppose since you're here as well, uh, might as well, the more the merrier. I have someone I would like to introduce both of you to. Uh, yes, uh, uh, okay. This here gentleman is a fine, delightful, and may I just say worldly, intelligent, and humorous fellow by the name of Martin Cranmer. Uh, Martin, this here is uh, one of our most faithful uh, carnival performers and also the cowboy with the golden voice. And right next to him, that right there is Midas Buchanan, uh, the mechanical whiz. Both of these two are some of the finest individuals that the carnival has to offer. And I will leave you in their capable hands to usher you to your seat in the showcase. Meanwhile, I must go prepare the cabinet of curiosities for your <laughs> private tour right after the show. I hope you do enjoy yourself, Mr. Cranmer. I will see you shortly. 
And as he kind of swaggers backward and makes a big show of bowing, he kind of sticks his head over towards you, Buster and Midas, and says, just make sure he has a good time and nothing bad happens to him. Maybe give him a front row seat. See you later, Mr. Cranmer. I think that you will find that tonight will be a memorable one for you indeed. And he takes off towards his, uh, his cabin. Oh, well. Hello. Uh, well, Mr. Uh, we, Mr. we uh, hope hope you are uh, in enjoying the the, uh, the the festivities of the the carnival, uh, oh, Mr. Cranmer. Yes, quite. The evening is young, though, and I've barely begun to take in the sights. But I hear that the showcase is quite a spectacle. Well, you are in luck, Mr. Kramer, because uh, we have secured you one of the very best seats at this show, and I can guarantee you uh, we have two amazing acts tonight that I think that you are going to love. The Lady of Ravens and The Dead Man are both performing tonight. I think you are going to just enjoy yourself immensely. So uh, please, follow oh, us. Hi. Uh, yes, uh, let, 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 let's, let's find him to his, his seat uh, uh, now. Uh, and he, I kind of lean into Buster. I'm like, should we maybe put him in the, in the second row? I, I mean, historically, if we, if we don't want anything bad to happen to him, more bad things happen to people in the first row than in, in the second row. Right. I, well, I, yeah, sometimes those uh, the ravens leave an unkindness on the front row uh, participants. Yes, uh, I think the second row would probably be best. Splash zone. <laughs> you have to buy you have to pay an extra 25 cents to get a poncho if you want to sit in the in the front row you want to avoid poop these what you do oh well i will uh happily go wherever you gentlemen recommend i, I suppose you would know your way around the showcase <laughs> better than i would quite so uh, quite so mr cranmer please uh this is inarguably the best seat in the house right here oh well uh actually you're still outside of the tent oh, heading, yeah, I, heading I, over I said come that follow way. us i thought we were talking, walking <laughs> yeah, i talking. will show you the best seat in the house we were right sorkin here. sit okay, down yes. old man the best seat is outside the yeah. tent <laughs> trust so, me you don't want to go in there as you both... normally oh sorry oh sorry go ahead i was saying uh, uh normally sir I, I i would have my my uh assistant should i say to show you uh to the seat as as I have found, people enjoy, but he is he is in timeout right now. <laughs> oh, well, I hope it was nothing too serious. No, yes, I, I, Midas. <laughs> why are we talking about your assistant right right now? I'm, I'm I, sure I, Mr. Cranmer is not know, interested I, in. <laughs> no, normally, that, that 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 that's my go-to I'm when, when I'm interested in to... all of it. This is no, quite oh, a okay. fascinating well, place so far, and I've yet to see much at all. I'm very excited to see where the evening takes us. Well, there are many sights and sounds for you to uh, partake tonight, so let's get it started. Follow me. And as you start to walk over towards the showcase tent, uh, somewhat slower now, hampered by the uh, maximum walking speed of an elderly shuffling man with a cane, um... Cranmer suddenly stops and, and sniffs the air for a moment. Huh. My, my, is that... What? I haven't smelled that scent in ages. Is that popped corn that I'm smelling? Now, quick asterisk here for those of you who did not watch our original Deadlands campaign. It was decided that at the wild cards table, for whatever reason, <laughs> the uh, dark energies of the reckoning had all of the negative side effects as presented in the Deadlands book. In addition, they did something weird to the corn and it doesn't pop normally. Uh, the corn that will actually pop is very, very rare. And popcorn is an expensive delicacy that is not often to be found. But I would, I would recognize that scent anywhere. The butter and, and salt, that's delightful. Mr. Nightlinger didn't mention that you had popcorn at the carnival this evening. Oh, huh. Minus didn't... shoots a glance at, um, at Buzz and it's just like. Yeah. Um... You know, uh, sometimes that smell can just sort of 
kind of erupt. I think I think the nostalgia of the carnival some sometimes uh, throws people into uh, uh, f- fits of nostalgia, as it were, and they they remember things that possibly uh, are not there to partake in. So I I apologize, but I'm uh, you're clearly in the right frame of mind to be here. In, oh. in fact, if if you would like, we 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 could we could take you to the the confection tent where our chef, who is highly talented, uh, could show you uh, everything that that there is is to eat at at the carnival. Yes, perhaps after the show we could do that. Um, as he is looking around, looking a bit disappointed and crestfallen that there is no popcorn, will both of you please give me a notice roll, Buster and Midas? I got a four. A four is a success, Midas. I got a Buster. four. A four is a success. You both look around um, because now that uh, Cranmer has mentioned it, you too both smell uh, the the scent of popcorn wafting through the air. And, and following the scent, you look over between some of the tents back in sort of the shadowy recesses of the carnival out of the lights of the midway. Uh, Buster, y- you see uh, a young boy just sort of standing uh, at the entrance to the darkness between two tents and just staring in there. Midas, you recognize this as Teddy, the ringleader of the unpleasant children with the schwarbs from earlier. And as you watch, it seems like he's listening to something intently. And then he takes a few steps forward and disappears into the darkness between the tents. Buzz, we should go after him. Well, I suppose we, the showcase is this way. Yes, the large red tent with the golden trim. <laughs> Very royal looking, if I do say so myself. Oh, uh, yes, yes. There's, a, in fact, a little bit of royalty in there. Uh, you, you'll have a great time. Uh, oh, I and imagine it, so. As, as he kind of ushers uh, Canmer forward, he'll lean back to Midas and go, What? You know what you you know what she can do to to, to children. She, did did it, did it, we it, see it, the popcorn lady in between the tents, or we you just saw, saw nothing? You saw no, darkness, but and we, you saw the boy speaking or listening to something in the darkness, and you smelled the distinct smell of popcorn. You don't need to see anything to know when she is about. Okay, L- look. Uh, maybe, maybe she's not even there, but but on the chance that she is, I, I, I know that we're not supposed to interfere, but, but, but you, 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 you can't just let children, even ones with, with such terrible taste in toys, just wander off to her devices. We don't even know if that's what that kid was going to. Midas and, and, and Nightlinger gave us a direct order to watch Mr. Cranmer and make sure that nothing happens to him. All, all right. Look, I, 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 I'll just go down the alley a, a short ways just, just to make sure that it's not the case. And then, then I, I will be right back in the tent. Okay. All right, I'll be here with Mr. Cranmer. Just let me know if anything untoward happens. Once the show starts, then we might be able to get away with doing something, but I want to make sure he's here and safe. Onward to the second row! <laughs> and I also, also if, if anything goes wrong and, and, I, I, and, and you need me, Christopher is facing the corner inside the tent, uh, Back behind the uh, thing, he is in timeout. But if you tell him uh, the phrase "do a flip," that's the phrase that I, I put in there. That then then he will will be released from that, and he can go find me. So do a flip, okay? Um... Celestina and Victor, as you are back in the in the tent preparing, uh, y- you cannot help but wonder why Christopher is just standing facing the corner of the of the preparation room, just out of the way of everyone, not moving, not saying anything, just standing with a sort of dejected slump to his body language. What's he, wrong with him? That Christopher, I don't know. I mean, there's a lot wrong with him, but what's wrong with him now? 
you know, he, maybe he finally is uh, going, you know, starting to break down the boy, the little boy body parts are de- decomposing, you know? And as, as you two are talking about him nearby, you see Christopher's head twitch and then it swivels around on, on his body so that his eyes can look at both of you. And even though they are as expressionless and empty as ever, you can't help but feel like maybe there's a little bit of sadness in his eyes as he says, I'm Schwarbs. I'm Schwarbs. And then turns back around to face the corner. <laughs> what the hell? What, what is uh, Schwarbs, Christopher? Meanwhile, Maybe. back in the uh, <laughs> back in the front tent. Uh, so the plan here, Buster, you are taking uh, Martin Cranmer into the tent. Um, Midas, you're going to go investigate the dark area that Teddy disappeared in? Yeah. Okay. Um, so Buster, you uh, walk with Mr. Cranmer into the tent and, and painstakingly make your way down towards the second row and get him seated. Uh, Midas, you head over to the shadows of the carnival. What are you wanting to do? So I want to kind of look, peer down the alley and then I'll flip down my ally goggles and just like see if I can see Teddy or anyone else down that alley. So you look into the darkness from a little ways back and you see nothing but the inky black. Flipping down your owl eye lenses, can you make a notice roll for me, please? Just so we have the opportunity for a crit fail. I can, (laughs) I got a four. A four though is a success. You do succeed. As you flip down those lenses, the night is cast in a little bit brighter black and white colors and you see the outline of Teddy's back. Uh, as he stands at the end of this little gap between the tents, and you see just past him what looks like a cloud of darkness of some kind, and just in the middle of that cloud, you can make out the barest outlines of a figure, perhaps a small elderly woman. I, I, I want to make my way towards them. You start making your way towards the alley and you can hear a whispering noise that seems to be coming from that cloud of darkness at the back. And you see Teddy's body language from behind is just stiff and transfixed as he stares forward and the whispering continues. Teddy! Uh, uh, Teddy, uh, that- At the first sound of his name, Teddy makes no movement whatsoever, but the dark figure in the cloud of black snaps their head up for a moment. And almost as though the voice was coming from right over your shoulder, you hear a dry whisper in your ear, Midas. What are you doing here? Not, 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 not children. You, 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 you can't do, do this to, to children. I... The whisper comes from your other ear now, almost as though it's from lips that are just millimeters away from the flesh of your ear. You can feel the cold breath of the words enter your ears. You do not presume to tell me anything, child. Unless you wish to take the child's place. A cold prickle of fear runs down your spine, Midas. And still Teddy stands at the end of the alleyway, not moving at all. You just see the dim outline of the figure in the darkness, and you can feel eyes on you. Just, just, let, let, let this one go. You, you, you don't need him. You stand in his stead, or you turn around and forget. (laughs) 
All right, fine. But let... Let the child go, and... And... And, and at least, for, for a time, don't prey upon the children of this carnival. Things are silent for a moment, and then, from all around you, no specific place and everywhere at once, you hear that dry, whispering voice break out into a low chuckle. Very well, child. You stand in this one's place, this unpleasant little boy whom no one would miss. He's, he's just a child. He, he, he may be unpleasant now, but, but he has his whole life ahead of him. He, he just wants, wants to be a child. Oh, yes. All the children do. Very well, child. Very soon, then, I will collect. And the darkness vanishes from the end of this alleyway as Teddy just sort of turns around blinking and sees you, Midas, and just sort of sneers as he shoves past you. Out of the way, sad old man! And just runs back out into the midst of the carnival with one final shout over his shoulder. By the way, your Buchanan balls totally sucked! Midas. You cannot help but feel like you may have accidentally stepped in something a bit bigger than you intended to. But Teddy is fine. The darkness is gone and with it goes the scent of popcorn and a little bit of the oppressiveness hanging over this area of the carnival seems to have lifted. Now Midas, if you don't hurry, you're going to be late to operate that spotting light. M Midas realizes that he's, he does, he almost doesn't realize how long he's been standing here. And he just turns, ah, yes. And he sets off at a kind of awkward run back to the tent. And as you are carried forward, each step that you take towards the tent causes this memory of the events that occurred here in the shadows between the tents to recede further and further into the back of your mind until by the time you reach the entrance to the showcase of spectacle, you can't even remember what it was that kept you in the first place. And as you make your way into the tent, filling up with all manner of interested looky-loos and rubes finding their seats, you see a Buster on the stage playing a, a few uh, just just cavalier strums of the guitar as people find their way to their seats. And as you climb up the rickety ladder to the catwalk above and prepare the spotting light, the showcase of spectacle begins. Buster, can I get a performance roll from you, please? And a weird science roll from you as well, Midas. Weird science. Uh, that's a seven. A seven is a success, Buster. That's a nine for me. A nine is a success with a raise, Midas. As the crowd starts to die down with their, their voices becoming softer and more focused as Buster starts to strum his guitar louder and more intentionally, Midas, you activate the spotting light, doing the complicated maneuvers of the flippings of switch <laughs> and the turning of cranks to crank up the power source until with a poop, the light turns on and spotlights Buster immediately on the stage at just the moment that he finishes strumming his guitar with a flourish and launches into the beginning of the showcase of spectacle, introducing the first handful of acts, the strong woman who does her set and is very impressive if, you know, as she normally is, a little bit one note. 
Uh, they even seem to have worked in a little bit of space at the end of the Strong Woman's Act for a brief appearance from David the Clown. It appears that the two of them have gotten over their uh, conflict from the last session and seem to have agreed to at least work together a little bit in this. And as one or two of the other acts finish up on the stage, it begins to grow a little bit quieter in the tent. Buster's music goes down to a softer pitch, and Midas, that is your cue to kind of spread out the light from the spotting light as Buster introduces the Lady of Ravens. Now, Buster, you don't have to introduce Celestina's act, but if you are so inspired, I'm sure we would all love to hear it. Uh, now, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, I entreat you to turn your eyes directly to the stage. What you are about to see is nothing short of extraordinary. Now, you may not believe in magic, but I tell you that this next performer has it inside of her. And with her trained ravens at her behest, she is about to show you wonders that you have never seen before. I present to you the Lady of Ravens, Celestina. And, and as you say that, Buster, with a poof, there are several clouds of smoke that erupt on the stage. Purple and green colored smoke coming up out of the ground itself. And as the audience coughs and fans the smoke away from their faces, a figure strides out onto the middle of the stage. Celestina, will you please describe to us what the Lady of Ravens does to entertain the assembled crowd with her various <clears throat> and sundry talented births. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, she she comes out uh, and the whole thing is very like creepy and mystical feeling. And, uh, and she does a series of essentially tricks, but it's sort of like artistic tricks with the Ravens popping out of this place, even though there's no way they could have ever fit in that tiny hutch. Uh, and also this, there's more ravens that just appear out of her feathered outfit. Uh, and, and they just, they continue to fly over there. They'll pick up that shiny thing and they drop it right in the perfect place. And, and Celestina, every time uh, another, you produce another raven, uh, the crowd continues to ooh and ah louder each time as more and more ravens start to fill the air above them and the stage. And as you pull the, uh, another one out of your outfit, you hear your favorite expression from the front row. You hear a young man go, well, there probably can't be any more ravens than that. <laughs> <laughs> but little does he know, there definitely are. Well, I think the flourish is like, there's like two ravens that, there's like a cloak that's made of feathers. It's just like a full cloak and they fly it out and drop it on me. And as they do, a ton of ravens just burst forth from the cloak all at once. She also does a lot of like, uh, um, acrobatics type stuff along with the ravens. Interpretive and... dance type <laughs> things with the ravens that yes. give them their instructions to fly and pick up objects and take a hat from an audience member's head and fly it around before dropping it right back on their head, that manner of thing. Yes. Give Lots us a performance this. role, Celestina. Indeed. And we'll give you a plus one to this since Buster chose to, uh, to give us a little taste of what it's like when he MCs the spectacle. Ooh, can I have a curious ticket, please? You can. A curious ticket is spent. A reroll is granted. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Oh, no. Oh, no. There Why didn't is. you use a Benny? <laughs> it's Friday the 13th. Is that a yes, crit it fail? It is. Yes, yes, it is. Celestina. This is why I need Vika. Celestina. <laughs> Everything is pooping. going super well, uh, which you know when you hear that phrase from the front row. Uh, however, uh, is it Haka that is filling in Has for- uh, Haska. Haska, Haska, who is filling in for Vika. Um, Haska has been giving you a little bit of attitude uh, during the show tonight and is a little slow on their cues to pick things up. And then as you get ready for the grand finale, which is when your ravens drop your cloak on you and then 
ravens burst out from underneath it and fly over the crowd, you feel a sense of mischief building in the air. Mm. And indeed, as the ravens burst out of your cloak and fly out over the audience, almost all at once, the entire assembled mass of your ravens let loose their bowels over the uh, assembled crowd beneath. And all of a sudden, you hear people crying out, "Oh my God! Oh, gross! They're, 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 I think they're, 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 they're pooping on us! Oh, oh they're so no, much! No, no, it's no. not poop. It's a, uh, uh, water. They have water on their claws and they shake. Uh, no one is buying it. People are starting to get really upset and grossed out. And Buster, you can see that the crowd is beginning to turn against you here. Celestina's show was going so well, but you need." a distraction. You need to give someone their cue a little bit early. And Buster, as you turn to the back where the performers uh, wait to come through, you give a little bit of a high sign to the next performer waiting in the wings and you hear the crack suddenly and loudly of a gunshot going off inside of the tent, which makes all of the audience members scream and duck and cower where they are. Buster, if you are so inclined, now comes the grand finale. The the sudden appearance, the sudden unwanted appearance of that masked vigilante. L ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, please, please, I, I understand that some things have happened here that perhaps should not have happened, but I believe that sound was, was what I'm afraid to say. It is the dead man who has found his way into our kind encampment here and as uh, you say that the the flaps pull just shove back and victor comes striding out into the crowd mask on full regalia midas you have the spotting light ready upstairs to zero in and spot the dead man as he makes his entrance a, a raven flies up and like pecks me in the head but i'm concentrating <laughs> <laughs> it's it's hoska but hoska is no vika no wanted in eight states and four territories. He is known as the dead man, for if he shows his face in any of these places, they will hang him for sure. <gasps> this outlaw has found his way into our tent, and he will show you why he has wanted in all of these places. Ladies and gentlemen, I ask you to please sit down for your own safety as he has a mighty trigger finger. Huh. The audience are holding their breath they are on the edge of their seats. Victor, what does the audience see from the mighty, the accurate, the deadly dead man? So Victor is standing center stage uh, with the spotlight from Midas. And uh, you see a little bit of dry ice in the backstage that has been used to had this sort of mist effect on the floor while Victor is standing out there. And yeah, uh, Lunk is back there uh, with, with like a, a big Lunk. fan, just sort of standing there and, and fanning the dry ice bucket to make uh -huh. sure that the fog goes out onto the stage. Um, and Victor looks out upon the crowd for a moment and just stands in silence as people sort of murmur to themselves about what they're seeing. Um, and he, as he holsters his gun, he says, Now, I ain't got no quarrel with you all. I was snuffed out before my time, but don't worry. I ain't got a bullet for any of you all. And then someone in the crowd stands up. This is a plant that we have set up and says, Well, I don't think... The dead should be walking around. And he runs towards Victor holding a glass bottle. And Victor quickly uh, pulls out his revolver and just shoots the bottle out of his hand. Um, and at, at the same time, two other men stand up. And this seems to be a pattern that happens where uh, a few people are marked in the crowd that they stand up and start attacking Victor, which is supposed to take the crowd by surprise. Um, and they all have different kinds of weapons, uh, all uh, in various shapes, fake guns and fake uh, knives and such, which he is shooting out of their hands. Um, which is ordinarily very, very impressive, Victor. And that is how the show normally goes. However, tonight, as you launch into your speech, telling the crowd to not be worried, you don't have a bullet for any of them. Victor, you look out through the crowd and you see a shadow standing silhouetted at the entrance of the tent. It's a figure that looks almost familiar to you but then you're distracted by movement in the crowd too soon to be one of the plants. And you look away from the silhouette at the tent entrance 
and you see what looks like a couple of men dressed in the bright green regalia of the Iron Dragon rail line, shouldering their way through the crowd, trying to get closer to the stage, their eyes intently trained on you, Victor. And as you see them in the crowd, one of them sees you. And as that moment of recognition passes between the two of you, he stands there and smiles in the audience and very carefully draws a finger slowly across his throat. He is making an intimidation roll, Victor. Shit. Uh, that is a five. I'm going to spend a curious ticket to re-roll that. Okay. That's a four. You know what? I'll spend a Benny to re-roll it just for funsies. It's a scary dude. Still a four. One more Benny, why not? Okay. Benny it up. All right, nope. Best I got was a five. So you are trying to resist a five, Victor. I need you to make a spirit roll. All right, I'm not terrible at that. Okay. Uh, uh, that isn't good enough though. So I will use a Benny. A Benny for Victor to re-roll. I don't want to be scared on stage. How embarrassing would that be? Okay, that is great, great, great. Uh, oh, that is again. Okay. Okay, so that is a, a, a 17. 17. Victor, though you are momentarily taken aback by the familiar looking figure at the tent flaps, not to mention the iron dragon thugs making their way towards the crowd with their eyes dead set on you, you have been in tight spots before. And you know, there's not a whole lot they can do right now while the show is going on. So you steal yourself and prepare to finish the rest of your act. Will you make a performance roll for me, please, Victor? We'll give you a plus one because once again, you were artfully introduced by the golden voiced Buster Buzz Callahan. Uh, and you did not fall prey to being distracted by the Iron Dragon gang members. Well, this is good. I mean, rail employees. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Uh -huh. Oh no, that's garbage. Uh, I will use a Benny to reroll that. A Benny to reroll your performance roll. My mask is falling off. Uh, well, that is a five. I will take a five. A five is a success. So, Victor, uh, just as your act typically unfurls, so too does it tonight. Although there is a little bit of confusion as some of your plants need to move through the path that those iron dragon rail warriors are currently standing in, but they manage to improvise it. You can trace their shots, no problem. And you blow the weapons out of all of their hands to the shock and awe of the assembled crowd. And as everyone breaks out in raucous applause, all of the performers for the showcase of spectacle join you on stage for your final bows and take a bow everyone well done well done showcase as you lift your head up again victor the iron dragon rail warriors have vanished from the crowd and you see nothing but a standing ovation from the audience members cheering and whistling and throwing coins onto the stage as they applaud the showcase of spectacle that they experienced this evening. And as folks start to stand up and make their way out of the tent to see what other delights the carnival has in store, Martin Cranmer makes his way to the stage to address all of you. Excuse me, excuse me. Maybe might I have a moment, excuse me. Yes. I, I don't the... want to bother. I, I know you're all, you must be bushwhacked after, after uh, <laughs> that performance, but I just wanted to say, as an audience member, that that was flabbergasting. That oh. was a fantastic performance. I, I applaud you, each and every one of you. Well done, I, I even got a little bit of a souvenir, he says, pointing <laughs> to a, a crusting bit of bird poop that is drying on the shoulder of his, of his uh, coat. You're quite welcome. Right. Good luck, they say. Or at least some people say that. Maybe not the people who get the good luck. Mm. <laughs> yes. Uh, yeah. so, well, I, I, I must be off. I believe I have a private tour of 
Nightlinger's cabinet of curiosities in my future, and I do not want to keep the great man waiting, but but well done, well done, one and all. And Martin Thanks. Cranmer turns on his heel and starts shuffling with his cane out of the showcase of spectacle and off oh. towards his private tour. Oh. Did you all get pooped on too? Uh, I actually didn't this time, Midas no. says from above as he climbs down the, <laughs> the rickety ladder. His face all pecked with blood and stuff. But... <laughs> yes, he is slightly <laughs> bleeding from a, a peck. Well. Uh, no, no, I, I did not get pooped on. Uh, Who's that old coop? That was Martin Cranmer. He's a special guest of Mr. Nightlinger. Oh. oh. Yes, we, we are apparently supposed to show him a, a very good time, so... Uh, well, should we maybe make sure he makes his way to the, uh, the, 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 the cabinet successfully? Um, I yes, suppose. yeah, we should. Did any of us see the railway workers coming in? No. Okay. Yeah, we should, uh, we should see what happened. Modest, what, what happened with the kid? Uh, what kid? Yeah, what do Midas what? think happened? Or, Midas, that's that's kind of the question that comes to, to your mind as well. Um, when Celestina says, what kid? You just kind of look at her and then nod a little bit and look back at Buster. Uh, what, what, what kid are you talking about, Buster? The, the kid who you said we had to go check out something that he was maybe talking to the popcorn lady or something like that. The you, popcorn lady? Midas, you are not sure what Buster's talking about. Maybe he's confused. Buster, you know that we're not supposed to intervene with the popcorn lady. It's right. Okay. Well, while while we're talking about children, Midas, um, lady. does Christopher uh, Schwarbs <laughs> ring a bell? Is he still saying that? Is that the boy you killed to put inside that little mechanical thing? No, Christopher Schwarbs. No, he doesn't say Schwarbs. Yes, Schwartz has stolen my idea. Perhaps working off of an early blueprint of the Buchanan balls, and has called them Schwarbs, a a, a oh. hack name for a hack product that that barely glows and bounces back all the time. Oh, it's the name oh. of a toy. That's stupid. All right, I, I pull out the Schwarb that I have, and I say, "Look at this thing." It's yeah, pathetic. Uh, got barely any size to it at all. Oh, yes, it's mm. ridiculous. I don't even, yeah. uh, what even is this? It looks Midas, like bird poop. <laughs> you throw it away in frustration and it hits a hard surface and bounces unerringly right back to your hand. <laughs> Damn it. Wow. <laughs> I well, repocket not, it. I go, not impressive. All right. Well, if he is, even if he is still saying that word, I'm going to have to go take Christopher out of timeout. Oh, that's you all. what that was. Okay. All right. So, Midas, you head to the back to uh, find and release Christopher from his punishment as uh, the rest of you follow the uh, last trailing bits of audience members out of the front of the tent of the showcase of spectacle. Um, the rest of the audience has streamed away, but as the three of you walk out, you see uh, a small group of individuals dressed all in the green of Iron Dragon rail line. And the one who had given you the slice across the neck gesture, Victor, is standing in front. As you all walk out, he pipes up, Victor Parrish, you're coming with us. Uh, and now, okay. I think, is a great time for us to take a very quick restroom break we will be back in just a couple minutes folks so don't go too far let's find out what the hell is happening at nightlinger's traveling carnival of the extraordinary this evening in mm. just a few moments yes we have a we have a one finger from dom one finger uh, one finger uh we are six subs away from the sub goal 
Oh my. Okay. So so think about that. And I know that there are some new people that have just followed. Thank you so much for following us and, and checking Welcome, us out. Welcome, folks. Uh, so so think think about it. Uh, think about gifting a sub or bring in a friend and gift them a sub. Uh, we, we would love to see more people um, checking this stuff out. Also, oh. there is a dice giveaway going on tonight. I was going to say that as there well. You go. Be pretty. Yeah. So if you enter exclamation point, enter giveaway, you will be entered into the giveaway. And it is a Norse Foundry Draugr set. So they're neat. Pretty cool. cool. They look awesome. They're very, However, very, very cool. You do have to be in chat when we do the drawing at the end of the show to win. And God willing, and the creek don't rise, that will be in about an hour and a half. So uh, <laughs> hang in for the long wow. haul, those of you who are staying up late. Or as we said, appoint a surrogate. Get some sort of weird system in place. Yeah. Uh, we'll have no choice but to believe you. We will be back <laughs> in just a few minutes. Don't go nowhere. We won't. Stay right there. Hello, and welcome Hello. back, everyone. Uh, thank you very much for bearing with us while we attended to some uh, basic biological needs. Thank you for uh, rejoining us. For those of you who may just be joining us, hi, we're Wild Cards. We're playing Deadlands using Savage Worlds, and we are uh, enjoying a just normal, completely by the book night at Nightlinger's Traveling Carnival of the Extraordinary. Mm. Uh, we're also doing a giveaway tonight for a super cool set of Norse Foundry uh, metal Draugr die. So, cool. so enter uh, exclamation mark, enter giveaway. Uh, all one word in the chat and make sure that you are still here at, uh, in about another hour and a half when the show wraps up maybe um, to uh, win that awesome prize. And before we get right back into things, we've got a few toasts, folks. So everyone Ooh. raise your Toasties. drink of choice. Lady Amago would like us to toast. Happy birthday, Megan. May <laughs> your delivery donuts be plentiful. Mm. Thank you, <laughs> delivery donuts. Set them yes. up Thank and you. knock them down. A really great memory, Lady Imago. Thank you very much for that. <laughs> Oboe Cop would like us to toast songs, schwarbs, squawks, shooting, and some showtime silliness. A most <laughs> sensational season summation. Onward to the second sequence. Set them up yeah. and knock them down. If you can't rhyme, you might as well do some alliteration. Right, Oboe Cop? Mm. Thank you very much for that. Thank Mix you. it up the poetic devices. SF <laughs> Giants 49er would like us to toast. Today's like a double header. First session zero and now season finale. <laughs> Set them up and knock them down. Thank you very much, SF Giants 49er. Yeah, go check out. We, you, yeah. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah. We do. I'm curious zero. to like watch session zero again and like remember is, what didn't happen or it is what changed. on YouTube, yes. We did make some changes in between mm -hmm. uh, session zero and starting the show. Uh, see if you can spot them all. Yeah. With wherewithal would like us to toast, what a weird and wild evening with such a delightful crew. May the sights and sounds never dull. Set them up and knock them down. Thank you very much, Thank with you. wherewithal. Yanto7 would like us to toast. No parody songs with dodgy meters tonight. No rhyming couplets, no dad jokes, or good-natured Canuck ribbing. Just a hearty congratulations for the end of a hugely entertaining Aww. season and a job well done. We're all Christopher now. <laughs> <laughs> Set him True. up and knock him down. Thank, Thank you very you. much, Yanto7. We appreciate it. <laughs> R.D. Armand would like us to toast. New from FAO Schwartz. Schwarbs, catch them, throw them, bounce them. Don't accept those cheap imitations. Ask your mom oh. or dad to get you Schwarbs today. Only $19.99 <laughs> plus shipping and handling. <laughs> Set them up and knock them down. Thank you very much, R.D. Armand, for, uh, I guess, jumping into my uh, early, early 90s Nickelodeon uh, pay-per-view <laughs> commercial yeah. thing. I I feel like that's when Christopher gets a whole, like, is able to break through, like, the Amazon password or, you know, the, like, phone password and just orders a ton of Schwarbs. Who orders 6,000 <laughs> Schwarbs? Um, he he also, somehow finds my, like, Smith and Robards catalog. And yep. sends, sends it away with your password. I don't know how they used to do mail order <laughs> stuff. Leon Bezzy would like to give one curious ticket to me, the ringmaster. Yeah. Thank you very much for that. Nice. Victor Von Doom 2099 would like to give one to the players. <gasps> nice. Uh, but SF Giants 49er would like to give one, two, three, four to me, the ringmaster. Thank Ooh. you for that. Nice. Oh my Sticky God. Four Aqua Snakes. Ogo Pogo Mojo. Both of <gasps> those Pogo people Mojo. would like to give 
an individual curious ticket to the players. Yay! Nice. Ain't Slade would like to give one curious ticket to me because they ain't Slade. Thank you very much. We appreciate nice. that. And Toa47 would like to give one to the players. Yay! Yeah. Also nice. All right. And, now. Uh, it looks like we just hit 25 brand new subs. We did! So. Hit 25 brand new subs! So welcome, yeah, you yeah, new yeah. mysterious strangers in chat. And that looks like not only did we get an all new, uh, completely original Dom song this evening, but at the beginning of the next season of Wild Cards, we'll be getting a new Dom song to get us started off in just the right way. So thank you very much, Mysterious Strangers, for unlocking that. And thank you, Dom, uh, for continuing to learn all of these songs <laughs> on the ukulele. Yes, and, thank and you. And I will remind you, if you are a brand new sub, if you were just gifted a sub, if you've resubbed, you can give a re-roll to your choice, either the GM or the players. So just let uh, one of our mods know, and they will let JCC know, and we go from there. But welcome we on in. Them. If you're new, you might not have known that, but that's what we do here. Yeah, we, we call rerolls curious tickets here on Wild Cards because we extra. Um, <laughs> At the moment, now, we call them that. <laughs> yes, currently. Sometimes <laughs> I call them other things because I forget. Um, as you step out of the carnival and see, uh, out of the showcase of Spectacle Tent and see the Iron Dragon gang member standing there and the one in the front calls out, Victor Parrish, you're coming with us. What do you want to do? Uh, so uh, I'm with I'm with the rest of the the crew here, and I'm just gonna kind of glance. Except at them for Midas, like, who ran into the back of the tent right. to grab Christopher. Um, I'm just gonna look at Buzz and Celsius and be like, uh, it's probably just a fan that wants to talk. I'm just gonna go uh, oblige. You know, Nightlinger wants us to um, talk to folk and whatnot. I'll just just give me a minute, and I'll. Uh, uh, well, Christian. howdy there. Victor's gonna walk over with this oh, wait, very- wait, one second. Before oh, you sorry. do, Victor, do yeah. we, have a, we have a question? Well, I have a question for Garav. Yes. Celestina might be able to put together what this could be, yes? Probably, maybe. Okay. Um, well, before, before you go over there, she's going to go, uh, Victor, you're sure about this? You want, uh, you want us to come with you? Uh, nah, you're fine here. You're 20 feet away. It's like you're like you're there anyways, right? Okay, I stay here in in visions, sight, space, whatever is word. Right, eyes. Yes, All right. that. Well, howdy there, partner. And Victor's gonna walk over with this very fake hokey cowboy thing, uh, acting up that this is just sort of a fan of some sort. Well, howdy. <laughs> The rest of the uh, the crew, there's about, there's five of them all together, counting the one in the front who's talking to you. And the others have their arms tucked into the kind of voluminous sleeves of their uniforms. But the one in front is just standing with his arms crossed and regarding you as you walk over to him, Victor. At this point, Midas, you have collected Christopher and uh, expressed to him that he is no longer in timeout. Um, uh, and you also told him you don't want him to use that, that word anymore, right? <laughs> Which yes. he, he seems to have interpreted as a uh, order to not speak at all. He is just completely silent and, dare you say it, truculent as you uh, walk through the, uh, the showcase tent and emerge near Celestina and Buster as Victor has walked over to this crowd of uh, green-dressed Iron Dragon workers. So Victor, you walk, you approach them? Yeah. Kind of putting on a big hokey like, oh, they're fans. And then and then what do you do? Uh, I'm just gonna, uh, I'm gonna uh, size them up and see if any of them have either obvious weapons or hidden weapons on them. Give me a common knowledge roll. Okay. Oh, I'm not very good at that. Who would have thunk? Uh, ooh, I used it though. Uh, so that is a 10, actually. 10. 10 is a success with a raise. Victor, you size up this Iron Dragon crew. Um, a, a outfit that is not at all unfamiliar to you. The rail line run by the Warlord Kang out of Shan Fan. And uh, also, just as a fun side note, at the end of our previous Deadlands campaign, the Mysterious Strangers voted that out of the Battle of uh, of Colorado, 
um, that Iron Dragon would emerge as the dominant rail line in the Weird West. And that is canonically true in our version of Deadlands the Weird West. The Iron okay. Dragon line uh, gave up the transcontinental race and instead has been working on building branching spurs out through the north and has even bartered their way into a spur into the Sioux territories, which is almost unheard of. Um, as you approach them, you notice, look, oh, yes, question? Sorry, could I ready fear just in case? Is that something I could do here? Like just ready to, to, to shoot it off to essentially support Victor if sure. need be. Yeah, yeah, you are you are ready to do something, Celestina. Okay. As you approach them, Victor, you size them up. You got a 10 on your roll, which is a success with a raise. You don't see any obvious weapons on any of them, but you also notice that they are, to a man, all of them very clearly Chinese. And that indicates to you that these are, uh, the Iron Dragon works a, a little differently. Uh, Shan Fan is kind of a, a closed uh, community of sorts. And Iron Dragon has rail workers from all stripes and walks of life who, who work on the line, but they will only hire Chinese rail warriors if they are going to represent their homeland in the best way they can. You notice none of them are carrying any weapons and you guess that's because each of them is one. You all must have came a real long way to see your show. Huh. You are a hard man to find, Victor Parrish, but Red Petal Sue is stubborn, and Red Petal Sue wants you back, and what she wants, she gets. Victor, that's a name you haven't heard in a really long time. But Red Petal Sue essentially owned you back in the day. So you um, have a choice, Parrish. You come with us, and then he cocks his eyebrow, or you perish. <laughs> um, Victor's going to look back at uh, where Buzz and Celsius are sitting, and now seeing Midas there as well, and just kind of make sure that they're far enough away in case anything breaks off. Um, and he looks back at, that, at uh, the person. Does he, does he recognize who's speaking? Does he, has he met this person before? No, th this, this uh, you, while you worked with Iron Dragon, you worked for Red Petal Sioux. All the warlords of Shan Fan have their own operations and their, their own uh, designs and schemes and machinations. The only thing uh, that put Warlord Kang at the top is, uh, just a crap load of power, an immensely terrifying pop, uh, reputation and a whole lot of business savvy. So you don't recognize these guys at all. Is that so? Why don't you tell uh, Sue that uh, doesn't really own me anymore. I got a new owner. That is not a satisfactory answer. And as he says that, the other four behind him break out of their stoic poses into a sudden battle readiness stance as they all let out a uniform. Hah! And it seems like things are suddenly going to get violent. Hey, 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 hey. No, 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 no. Let's just, uh, it's, no, it's we're just it's part of the show. Everything's fine. No Put talking, Parrish, unless you answer the question. Come with us and say yes, or say no, and die here. All right. Fine. I'll go. Really? As simple as that? Well, it's not, not quite that simple. You see, I gotta finish off the day and then I'm all yours. How about that? Oh no, we leave now. We have a train to catch. Well, the train can wait because if I run out without saying something to my new owner, as it were, 
You're all going to have something else rain down upon you all. You have but one owner, Parrish, and she is not a patient woman. Now we go. All right. Can I say goodbye to my friends back there? Make it quick. All right. Victor's gonna give him a nod and then turn around and walk back to everybody else. What is it? What's happening? <sighs> All right, I gotta talk real quick. So, um, <clears throat> you see those, uh, there's three of them or four of them? There's five of them all together. You see those five uh, fellows I was talking to? Uh, yes. They were almost impossible to miss, everyone, yes. <laughs> yes, yeah. I, the ones I you were just them. talking to? Yeah. Yeah, now, uh, yes or no, real quick, do you think the four of us could kill them right now? Yes. yes. Technically, uh, wait, in, in, in the, mid, the middle of the carnival? Uh, in the middle of the carnival, yes, right the fuck now. If Victor says we need to kill them, we kill them. Uh, and uh, Nightling wouldn't like it, but uh, we, we might be able to. All right. Can we maybe lure them somewhere else away from prying eyes? That's not a bad idea. Hurry it up, Parrish. We ain't got all night. All right. I got to go with them. So go tail with me. Him. Just what? tail me. Oh. And then once we get to someplace safe, safe out of here anyways, ambush us. Okay. All right. Okay. Now, don't worry about me. If you got to get messy, you kill them. All right. Victor, you sure about this? Yeah, I'm sure as shit. Okay. All right. All right. Uh, Buzz, give me a hug. Oh, okay. And I give Buzz a very quick hug and then just wave goodbye to everybody. All right. Uh, and then he'll start walking towards the group of men. What an embarrassing display of affection. Yeah, well, what do your you know time about away is, Your time away has made you soft, Parrish. Come, let us go. And he turns on his heel as the other four kind of just fan out uh, around you in enough of a sense to try and make it seem like you're just a casual group of people go uh, going about their business while indicating very clearly to you that they are not letting you out of their ring. Did Vika ever come back? Uh, yes, uh, yes, I forgot about Vika. Uh, yes, uh, at this point, Vika wings down from the sky, Celestina, and alights on your arm. Ah! Vika, what, what did that uh, Edmund man do? Talk men! Talk green men! Like the color green? Oh, or they in those those people over there. Vika, Vika, yeah, moves her head towards the group moving away with Victor and indicates uh, at them squawking. All right, Vika, I need you to carefully follow and uh, and keep track. I, I'll be right behind you, but follow. Keep eye on Victor. All right. Vika, careful. Good. Vika uh, takes off into the night. Okay, my thought is that I also follow Vicky in the raven form to keep eye and you all tail us so you don't have to get too close, yes? yes and this, 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 this is a carnival matter now. We might be able to pull a couple others in to help us. Well, this true. Should we go to Nightlinger? I don't think there's time to go to Nightlinger. But Nightlinger's it's... entertaining Mr. Cranmer right now. I don't think it would be good to involve him. Also, these people are moving with purpose and speed away from the carnival. Um, if whatever it is that you're doing, if you're not quick, they will get away. So, okay, well, oh, sorry, go ahead. I, I was just gonna say, Midas just wants to kind of like take off at like a, a, at a walk and just like every time he like finds people who are working the carnival, he'll just go up to him and say like, outsiders are after, Vig uh, after Victor. This is a carnival matter now, follow me and just like try and get people to like come with him. Oh, okay. All right. Um so you are uh you you bring or you're trying to gather uh different carnival folks who who are available? Yeah. Uh yeah, give me a persuasion roll. Not my best, but but let's do it. Oh god. <laughs> yep, crit fail. Crit fail. 
Um, so, Midas, every hmm. time you spot someone who might be able to help you out and you try and motion to them and tell them what's going on, a group of freaking kids run through bouncing schwarbs off the ground as they go whistling and shrieking through the night, always somehow overshadowing your words or distracting the person you're trying to get the attention of, and you are completely unable to flag down any other members of the carnival, at least not without letting Victor get out of your sight. Those things are a hazard. They should be banned from the carnival. They are uh, continuing to move on. What are you all doing? Okay, Buzz, if I, if I turn to Raven form, I follow Vika, you follow me, yes? yes, yes, that, yes yep, that sounds fine. That sounds fine. And it wouldn't okay. hurt to maybe have more of the Ravens, perhaps, if they're still a little angry to uh, oh. for a distraction. Yes. I like so this idea. You okay. all are saying this as you're following yes. the group, right? Yeah. Okay. Um, but I will I also add that I have trouble magnet if you want to add anything. Oh yeah, no, I, I'm I'm sort of adding that on now. Uh, okay, uh -oh. I, I just made a roll. Uh, Great. As as the as the group are, are walking um, with with you, Victor, and you and you are walking away, a schwarb comes <laughs> like just fizzing through the night, and uh, the one in the lead looks back to see where it came from, and then he just stares back for a moment and keeps walking forward. And he calls back to you over his shoulder, Victor. Your friends from the show seem to be following us, Parrish. Any idea why they might be doing that? Uh, Victor's gonna look back uh, for a moment and then look forward again and say, well, they might not be too happy about me leaving, so they might be putting a hit out on me. Stupid. I'm their property Parrish. too, you know? Stupid, very stupid. Take them. What? And he, as he says that, the other four standing uh, with him suddenly jump backwards, doing back handsprings across uh, the ground to cover the distance between you all and jumping into a battle stance directly in front of you all. We are now in a combat. <laughs> However. Uh oh. I hope you all didn't forget about our premature mystery elation from last what? episode. Ah! The mystery box card that has not yet come into play, but at this point, it will. Hey, Rube! The next time the posse enters combat, they must all holler the traditional battle cry. In doing so, they each get to perform one action before initiative cards are drawn. That comes from Ghost Hack 9. We've got a lot of Hey, Rube cards in the mystery Ooh. box because apparently... That was a call that carnival uh, folk made whenever there were unruly uh, patrons, unruly rubes getting up to no mm -hmm. good to summon other carnival members to their aid. Ah. So as you all shout it out. Hey, hey Rube. Hey, Rube. Hey, Rube. Before we even put down action cards, thanks to Ghost Hack 9 and a timely mystery box card, you each get to perform one action, not a turn, an action. What would you each like to do? You can go hey. in any order you want. I'll go first. I got, I got, an, I got an easy one. So as this, as this guy turns and says, "Take them," Victor's gonna quick draw his gun and say, "Take this," and just point blank shoot him in the head. Oh, all right, badass. <laughs> um, I dig that. Also, I am gonna use my badass bonus on this. You're gonna use your badass bonus yeah. on this. Okay. This is a, this is a cold shot. You are. Oh, it's a cold shot to the yeah, head. Because he gets very him. close to him and he's just cold shotting him. You are going to be <laughs> the badass we know you to be, Victor. As he says, take them, and the other members spring into a battle stance to fight your friends. You quickly pull your gun, and say, take this, and fire point blank at his head. Uh, that is a minus four as a cold shot to the head, but with your plus four, that is a straight. Roll. He is directly in front of you, so this is going to be against his parry. Uh, oh, but still. shit. Well, okay. Yeah, that is... Um, I, no, I think it's a great use of it. No, no you got to do it, though. Sure, sure, sure. Uh, okay, great. Um, so it's a straight roll. Uh, I'm trying to... Let me just double check if I get any bonuses for my quick draw holster. I think that's only for, like, initiative purposes, but since we're not really doing... I, that. Yeah, no, you, you definitely were able to free that gun easily. Okay, okay cool. Then I'm going to do... My shooting roll. Uh, okay, so that is a, uh, it's a seven. I'm just, I just don't know if it's gonna hit his parry. So that's what, a what, seven. Can, that's can, with, can, that's the straight roll. That's, that's a straight a roll, yeah. A seven 
will hit Victor. Yes! Yeah. All right, cool. Roll damage uh, and add an extra four damage to it for the headshot. Sweet, sweet, sweet baby Jesus. Okay. Uh, oh, that's a one and a three. I'm going to use a Benny to reroll my damage. A Benny to reroll your damage. I one Benny that remains action. for Victor Parrish. What'd you say? Midas? I said I support that action. Oh, yeah, I do too. But not literally support it. Yeah, I get it. <laughs> uh, okay, that's a little better. So that is seven plus four plus the one from the gun plus the one from me being a weapon of death. Uh, I think is actually 13. Uh, 13 damage on Friday the 13th, you grim oh. servant of death, is <laughs> enough. As you pull your gun out, the one in charge has barely a moment to register surprise before you have splattered the insides of his head all over the outsides of the ground, and he drops immediately. As that shot rings out, the rest of you have a chance to act. What do you do? Um, I would like, uh, how close are they to us? Or how close are they? They're, they're close. They're within, you could, you could take a move action and be right up next to them. Okay, well, I don't need to necessarily move, but I want to turn Good, to because that would be your only action. Whomever <laughs> is closest to me. Can I, can I cast a spell? Yes, that is okay. an action. Whomever is closest to me and just say, you made the mistake. I'm going to char your face and feed it to my birds. And I want to elemental manipulation right into that guy's face. Okay, uh, you're going to uh, element, which element? Fire. Fire? I char, yes. Okay, I, this, is, this is very cool. It doesn't do as much damage as Bolt. I just wanna, I just wanna be sure that uh, you, you are, are, are clear I, I, on that. You're just gonna sure, be doing a sure. D6 of damage, maybe let's, a D8. Let's change it to, I'm going to let all these bugs eat your face and make it. <laughs> I like that, yeah, I like that. Uh, <laughs> elemental manipulation is more of a Swiss army knife, not so much of a- I of know, a... but it's so, I like the, the color of it. Uh, okay. Just making sure I have the right spell casting. I mean, bugs eating their face is also pretty colorful. Yeah, but then my ravens don't get to eat. My ravens can eat the bugs that eat their face. Great, love it. A circle of life. That's how you feed your ravens, you bolt at them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there you go, raven. Uh, <laughs> that is a five. A five is a success. Celestina, roll damage. I will roll damage. Uh, oh, right, it's right in front of my face. Um. Oh, no, it isn't right in front of my face. Why? Thank you. Uh, can I get a curious ticket? I got six, but I really want more. Curious damage. ticket to re-roll damage. Go for it, Celestina. <gasps> I aced it on both die. Oh, that's Whoa. way different than six. That is a 17. 17. Hell yeah. Um, so as you kindly explain to the gentleman what is about to happen while you're making the intricate movements with your hand and summoning the shadow insects up from the darkness around you, you blast them out towards his face. And just as promised, his face is picked clean down to the bone by the swarm of insects just ravaging his body. And he falls to the ground with barely time to scream. Next, Vika Diener. <laughs> uh, I will go uh, and just uh, I'm just going to say it looks like you brought a fist to a gunfight and he's going to pull out his shotgun and blast I'm getting flashbacks Yeah. <laughs> um, and you're going to pull out your shotgun and, and blast uh, one nearby? yeah Whoosh. Right out from your your hip mount, right? You have a. It's uh, it's right. It's kind of a back mount. It's like oh, yeah, attached yeah. to his your, belt. Yeah. Your your back belt holster. The yeah. shotgun comes sliding out, spinning into your hand, and right down the center of this person's body. And Make your I shooting will, roll. I will also use my plus four here. All right, Buster, yeah. Buzz, Callahan, be the badass we know you to be. And add a plus four to your shooting roll. Okay. Okay. I will also point out, it is a plus four to any roll that you make. You could add it to the damage roll if you would prefer. Oh, oh that's true. Since mm. you already get a plus two for shooting. Yeah. Cool. That cool. Mm -hmm. I, yeah, I'll save it for damage. All right. 
Make your shooting roll. Um, that's a five. A five is a success, Buster. Yes. Roll damage, you badass, and add four to it. That's horrible damage. I'm going to re-roll that with a curious ticket, please. Re-rolled with a curious ticket. You got it. I feel like these carnival screams in the background are probably for a different yeah. reason now. Oh, this <laughs> is that's all really, happening so fast. That's really bad. That's really, really low. That's only six damage. Um, okay, that's I'm four, using though, a right? What? You're using a Benny? Yeah. All right, Buster. Don't forget Ooh. to add four to it, yeah. Right, yeah. Okay, oh, he is. Ooh. Oh, you are adding? Oh, wow. <laughs> oh, terrible. Uh, that's 13, which should still be enough. It's 13. What? The yeah. 13 uh, is not so, terrible. Buster. My day. Even though I know you have a <laughs> shotgun and it's sawed off and it doesn't work this way, just because it's freaking cool, you pull the shotgun out and cock it much like uh, those uh, riflemen do in the Quick and the Dead that are in Gene Hackman's employ. As you, uh, we'll, we'll say there's a spring-loaded lever action to it just right now. So you can <laughs> do that cool spring-load lever uh, spin <laughs> thing and then fire it directly into this gentleman. Uh, the saw, sawed off shotgun blast saws that guy off. Right through the middle <laughs> of his body, you sever his legs from the rest of him as Ouch. he just flies backwards into an inert pile of organic once human. Wow. Midas. Midas doesn't feel like he can do as many cool things as everybody else right now, because everyone's been like pretty sweet. So Midas is just gonna be like, Christopher, battle mode, go. And okay. I, I wanna uh, activate Christopher with um, the plus one modifier for um, Claws. Okay, since this is your action, you're casting Summon Ally, I will say as part of that, Christopher gets an action as this action as well. Okay. Okay, so uh, give us a weird science roll to activate battle mode. Rolling. That's a critical failure. <laughs> um, so Christopher malfunctions. Christopher. Uh, oh. As you say, Christopher, battle mode! Uh, he starts to vibrate and, and shake a little bit, and then uh, Christopher just stops and turns back and looks at you. <laughs> no! What? Christopher, battle mode! Battle mode, Christopher! Christopher, battle mode! No! C Christopher... Uh, you're, you're embarrassing me in front of everybody. Now, um, you're, you're embarrassing me in front of the wizards. This did, <laughs> this did not work for you, Midas. Uh, you spent uh, just the one PowerPoint. However, uh, I am going to say you get a minus one to the next action that you take because you are so demoralized by your automaton refusing your orders. Uh, so all well, of your... Yes. I have to roll on the malfunction table too, right? Uh, no, Christopher is not an infernal device. He's part of your. Uh, sure, your... but he's a spell. He's a he's a weird science spell. He's oh a god, ally. yes he is, and you did. Oh, you and did. And I crit, crit failed. failed. Oh yes, yes. It's definitely a malfunction. It's not. It's not the malfunction table. It's the. Uh, um, oh god, Backlash? what is it called for mad scientists? Oh, do you have it on up on your page? Uh, it's. It's the malfunction table, page 89 in the book. I'm finding the it. The madness this... table. Oh, the madness oh, no, wait. table. Back no, no, you're right. The malfunction it's table. It's malfunction. Oh. Malfunction, It yes. could be madness. You're right. Roll a d20 for me. Okay. I will do you not have it up? assessing a negative one. Yes, I do, because I forgot Ooh. when you crit failed that this happened. So no negative one, just this. I think it's so a I got a 13. <gasps> he got a 13! <laughs> oh, man. That's great. That's perfect. That's <laughs> wild. A 13. Oh my um, God. Yeah. Wow, that is really wild. Midas, you remember those uh, those gremlins oh. that you all chased out of the discombobulator? Mm -hmm. Well, it seems you didn't get all of them. And as Christopher turns and says, no, 
you see uh, this little patch of, uh, well, many swarming patches of darkness. Um, eight of them, to be precise. Oh my um, God. Just swarming up out of the ground, and all at once they rush at Christopher, and Christopher just sort of jerks and spasms as they do, uh, and then nothing happens, but something has happened to Christopher. And now we are in a combat. Yeah. Cool. So. Got gremlins. Uh, yeah, Christopher has gremlins. I'm sure that won't manifest in any sort of problematic way at some point. Um, Celestina, an eight of diamonds for you. Okay, okay. Midas, six of clubs. Victor, jack of hearts. Buster, ace of hearts. Ooh. The two remaining rail warriors, a five of hearts. Up first, Buster Buzz Callahan. Uh, I I will flip the the shotgun again, um, uh, and fire the other barrel of the shotgun right. at the other guy. I got one for each of you. Barrel, yep. barrel. Here it comes. Give us a shooting roll, Buster. Uh, that's a that's a six. Six is a success. Roll damage. Can I get a curious ticket to re-roll that? Curious that's ticket a, to re-roll. It's a six right now. Okay, that's a nine. A nine is uh, wait. That's that's damage or this that's is your damage. roll? Damage. Damage. Uh, nine damage is enough to shake one of them just shy of taking them down. You fire out mm. a shot, and it grazes the hip of one of the martial artists who spins off to the side, distracted and damaged, but not down. Anything else, Buster? Uh, I, I'm going to try and find some, like, cover basically, if I can. Okay. Um, there is a fair amount of, of cover nearby. As the fighting has broken out, the crowds around at first thought it was some sort of curiosity and now are, are, are screaming out in panic and trying to move away uh, from the violence. You duck behind a concession stand and uh, prepare for what comes next. Victor, you are up. Uh, I'm going to cast Ammo Whammy real quick, like... So, let me just make sure this is the right die for it. It is great. Uh, oh, I aced it. Come on, something that's not... Oh, I aced it again. Well, it doesn't matter. Uh, so, uh, that's a 16. Uh, so, I get two effects on it. Yeah, you do. Uh, I will do uh, uh, Loaded for Bear to increase the damage type and uh, Bullet with your name on it to add plus two to my shooting. Ouch! Yes. All right, you spin your gun and two runes light up simultaneously on it, charging your bullets with a soft glow as you line up your shot. Uh, and uh, I'm gonna shoot the one uh, that, uh, I guess b the one that Buzz, Buzz shook one, is that right? Yes, yes. I'm gonna, I'm gonna shoot the other one. All right, as the other one just jumps back from the sudden shotgun blast and turns to face you all, Victor, your gun is already up glowing and ready and you squeeze off a shot. Give us that roll. Dodge this. Uh, that is eight plus two, that's 10 uh, for the shooting roll. Okay, yeah, that's a hit with a raise. So roll damage Hell plus an extra D6 plus yes. all that extra stuff you get from ammo whammy. Okay, <laughs> okay. Uh, oh, that's not great. Uh, so that is six plus three, which is nine plus two is 11 plus one plus one. It's a 13. I did 13 again. You wow. did a 13 and as previously established, a 13 <laughs> is enough to drop one of these guys before he even has a chance to react. Your bullet has hit home and dropped him to the ground, Victor. Only one is remaining and he is shaken. Next up, Celestina. Ooh, okay. I would like to, you know, Taking that one guy's face off was easy enough. Let's take off this guy's face. I just want to smile and and uh, and gather the bugs back and go now to this face. You're uh, going to take his face off. <laughs> I am. Whoa. 
Oh, okay. Here I go. Ah, well, that's a four. A four is all you need, Celestina, to direct <laughs> those bugs towards someone's face. Uh, and I really want to make uh, uh, an example out of this guy so that anyone in this carnival who's watching knows not to mess with us, so I'll add my plus four to my damage. I'm, he's Ooh. the last one here, and yep. he's barely standing. I'm talking about little Mr. Edmund Hand Man. All right, Celestina, you are going to add your plus four to your damage, so roll 2d6 plus four. I already aced on both my time. Oh my god! Oh boy! Oh my god, I did it again! <gasps> oh my goodness! Talk about overkill. I just aced again. Uh, the f- 39 damage. <laughs> Is that with the plus four? Yes. 39 damage, you redirect the shadow bugs, and as you tell them, now take his face, um, they do so much more, Celestina. As yeah. you blow them that direction, the crowd, the cloud of bugs swarms and expands, and as it hits the individual, you hear a scream for just a moment before it is completely cut short, and as blood mists out into the air around him, the bugs dissipate, revealing nothing but an empty pair of boots on the ground where once there was a man, and with the last one down, our combat has ended. As people scream and shout from all around you, uh, you hear the familiar cry of Jebediah Nightlinger. Oh, well now, folks, don't be frightened. Now that was just another part of tonight's entertainment. <laughs> I admit, we did go all out on that one, really poured a lot of resources into the effects budget, folks. But as you can see, everything is under control. This is all just part of the show. Let's hear it for our performers here tonight, everyone. Let's give them a hand. And as uh, everyone in the, in the crowd just sort of starts confusedly looking around, and, and clapping, you see right next to Nightlinger, uh, Martin Cranmer looking excited beyond all reason, just trembling with his cane as he pipes up from next to Nightlinger. Oh my goodness. This has been the most exciting evening that I can remember. Mr. Nightlinger, truly you have kept your end of the bargain and, and shown me a night beyond any I have ever seen. I, I think that I feel comfortable now giving my treasure over to you. And as he digs around in his coat pocket for a small brown paper wrapped parcel, Nightlinger's eyes widen from underneath the shadow of his top hat. And as Martin prepares to pull it out and hand it over, Victor, you smell stale sweat and tobacco, but not just any tobacco, a very specific blend that you haven't smelled in many years, not since your time in Shan Fan. And you hear a familiar voice pipe up from behind you to match that silhouette at the doorway of the showcase of spectacle from earlier. Well! Parish, Vic Parish, in the flesh and blood as I live and breathe. You turn around and on top of a concession stand, not too far away, stands an old friend, an old contemporary from back in your killing days. Now, Victor, you always think of yourself a bit as the mad dog of the carnival, maybe a little bit in homage to Mad Dog, this individual that you used to work with back in your Shan Fan days, twitchy and lean. He stands tall atop the concession stand, his gun mounted in the holster at his hip, two women standing on either side behind him. Now folks, I want to apologize for this little interruption to tonight's festivities, but you see, 
we've got a very important bit of business to attend to here. And as he says that, from out in the darkness on the outskirts of the carnival, lights suddenly spring to life. One, two, three, bright electric lights. And Midas, you hear a very familiar sound. The whining, high-pitched grinding noise of velocipede motors kicking into gear as the lights start to move and spin in increasingly quick circles around the carnival. You hear the hooting and hollering of the riders of the velocipedes crying out from the darkness as people start to look around confused and scared. Mad Dog cries out, now Vic, listen, we ain't here just for you, don't get all big headed now. And as he says that one of the motorcycle, one of the velocipedes, I'm sorry, comes <laughs> screaming <laughs> through the middle of the carnival, two others on either side as people shout and dive out of the way. The one in the lead comes right by Martin Cranmer, riding right between him and Nightlinger. And as he does, grabbing the brown paper parcel right out of Cranmer's hands and shooting off into the night as the other two motorcycles spread out in either direction, lighting bottles with rags and dark amber liquid inside of them and flinging them out gleefully into the night. Flames begin to explode out in the carnival and Mad Dog jumps down off of the top of the concession stand. Now, Vic, I've been waiting a long, long time for this. Now you do what it is that you feel you need to do here, Vic, but me, I'm calling you out and he flips his duster to the side and widens his eyes at you as though awaiting your response. Folks, we are in the actual combat. Uh, uh, okay. Victor, before we go, are you accepting the call out? Oh, damn well I am. How do you accept it, Victor? You mean like narratively or like, do I get yeah, a message? like oh. what do you say? Uh, what do you so, do? So to, to, to Mad Dog, um, is that what I would call him? That That is uh, what he was known as. Okay, so my, my hand has been on my gun ever since the end of that fight. And uh, he'll look up at Mad Dog and say, well, all right, Mad Dog, we both knew it was gonna end this way. So after today, Either you or me. One of us is a dead man. One of us is, but only one of us has that word written above their pretty picture all over this carnival. So the odds aren't looking great for you, Vic. So before we draw the initiative cards, Victor, do you have any edges that affect how many whole cards you get dealt in a duel? I don't believe I do. Then Victor, this is your whole card. I am going to show it to you. I am not going to look at it, but okay. let me know that you can clearly see it. Are you ready? Yeah. Can you see it? Uh, I can see the number. I, I can um, see it. I, I, think, see I think it. I can, I think I can, yeah. Okay, Yeah. do you remember it? Yes, I do. Mark it down? Uh, I will. And Mad Dog is going to get his three whole cards before we start. Me, hey, that's cheats! Oh, you remember Mad Dog was pretty quick with the gun. Not as fast as you, Victor, but it's been several years since you last saw one another, and who knows what he's been up to in the intervening time, all right? The two of you are in a duel. These first two rounds, you can test each other, or take other combat maneuvers, but you cannot make any attacks. The rest of you, a duel is a sacred thing. Interfere with it at your own risk, but hey, there's plenty other things going on at the carnival right now. As the flames and screams alight, Nightlinger just looks around in confusion and cries out, damn it, God damn it, not tonight, to me. And as he says that, the panel slides open at the bottom of his black wagon, and in one fluid motion, the tall, hooded figure of the Nightman emerges and streaks off after Nightlinger, who goes running out into the midst of the chaos. All of the carnival folks spread out, trying to mitigate the damage as the other velocipedes continue to run rampant through the carnival. The one that stole the parcel 
making out as though trying to escape. And the two women on top of the concession stand that Mad Dog was standing on begin to weave and move their arms in a very strange, synchronized, and decidedly magical looking way. Celestina, and three of clubs. Oh, wow. Midas, two of spades. Oof. Victor, uh, a six of spades. Buster, an ace of spades. Ooh. For Mad Dog, a 10 of diamonds, and I'll go ahead and deal him his bennies here. For the Velocipedes, a nine of clubs. For the two on the concession stand, a 10 of hearts. Would anyone like to spend a Benny to redraw their card? Yes, indeed. All right, one, all white. One for Celestina, <laughs> one for Midas. Benny Jumpy. spent, new cards gained. Midas, a two of diamonds. Ah. There's a different Just another two. two. It goes later now. Uh, Celestina, a five of diamonds. Oh, all right, better. one more. One more Benny for Midas. Come on, there's got to be a joker in here somewhere. Heart of the cards. Nope, but a ten of clubs will do you a lot better. better. Anyone else? No. All right. First up, then, Buster. So, Buster, one of the Velocipedes has taken off with the item that Cranmer had. Two more are running rampant through the carnival, spreading fire and chaos. What do you want to do? Um, uh, I want to try to stop the other Velocipedes. Uh, the ones that are, that are, that are uh, throwing the Molotov chaos. cocktails? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Um, so I'm going to say, uh, how do you want to stop them? You want to just try and like, and shoot one of them off of the Velocipede? What do you want to do? Yeah. Buster? Yeah. That's what I'd like to do. I'd like to okay. try and shoot. Um, so I'm going to say, if you get yourself into a position, you can go on hold and try and interrupt them at the beginning of their turn to just blast one of them off the Velocipede. Does that, does that work for you? Yeah, they're, yeah. They're so, moving fast on these things. So I'm so so yes. Yeah, so I'm going to move then to to try to get to a position where I can get a good shot off at them. But as I go, I'm yelling out to Celestina, "Can you can you take care of that fire?" And to Midas, "Do you think you could catch them on your uh, thingy?" I could slow them down. Okay, and then he runs. Right. He just goes. All right, so Buster, you take a run through the screaming um, wild crowd and try and find an area near a, a little cart that would give you some shelter. As you see one of the Velocipedes making a turn and heading back this way to make another run through the carnival, you think you are going to be right directly in their path when they come this way and you will be ready. You go on hold, Buster. Next up is going to be, oh man, so many cards out and in play. Uh. Let's see, that's clubs, diamonds, hearts. It looks like first up are going to be the ladies on top of the concession stand. Both of them are very, very focused on you, Celestina. The first one begins to weave her arms back and forth between the one right next to her and herself. And you feel as well as see dark energies begin to swell up around them. A spell casting roll. That is a failure. I will spend a curious ticket to re-roll. That is a worse failure. I will spend a GM Benny to re-roll. No! That is a success. That is a seven. Um, this weird shadowy mist sort of springs up in front of both of them, obscuring Wait, them actually, somewhat from- Wait, yes. actually, seven sun. Ooh, <laughs> Buster! Thanks, thanks, You're spending bud. one of your pennies to invalidate mine. Yeah. Ooh. Wow. Uh, the one who tries to summon the obscuring cloud of shadow is distracted by uh something, something. I, uh, that... <laughs> I imagine Buster as he's running by just goes. Ooh. <laughs> 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 As Buster's running by, her attention focused on Celestina and broke her concentration broken by the weird faces and sounds that Buster's making to distract her as she goes by. Her arcane energy fizzles 
without making any contact whatsoever. Excellent use of Seventh Son. However, the second one, too, is beginning to marshal her power, and she is pointing directly at you, Celestina. Here comes another spell casting roll. That is a six, which is a success. Mm. Celestina, as she points at you, you feel darkness creeping in through the edges of your vision, obscuring your sight and making it difficult to keep track of things around here. She has cast blind on you and you are going to be at a minus two to any action that requires sight until you mm. shake that off. Make a note of that, Celestina. Okay. And then they strike a pose together on top of the concession stand and you can feel energy building up in them, Celestina, and that is it for the ladies, the witches on top of the stand. Next up, diamonds before clubs. All right, next up is Mad Dog. He stands there in the midst of all of this chaos and is not touched by it at all, Victor. Hey, Vic, you remember how you were always faster than me? Yeah. You remember how I stayed and have become the stone cold killer you always wished you were, and you join a little traveling show and spin your gun around for fun? <sighs> you remember that, Vic? He's making a taunt roll, Victor. All right. Uh, I am going to spend a curious ticket to re-roll that. It's a four and a one. It's moderately better. Uh, I will spend one of his bennies to re-roll this. Oh. That's an ace on the wild die. Shit. That is a seven altogether. You are resisting taunt with smarts, Victor. Make your smarts roll. Smarts. All right. Uh, ooh, I aced it on a six, baby. Uh, I got a 10. A 10 is a success. He tries to taunt you, Victor, but it doesn't make it through. Doesn't you're matter what you learned. Down. You're going to be dead today. One of us is, Vic. One of us is. And his fingers twitch in the air above his gun. That is it for him. Next up, Midas. Midas looks at Christopher and goes, you, 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 you are, you are in trouble. You are in trouble, Christopher. Guys, I'm Schwarbs. And, and then Midas is going to, uh, could I, if, if I ran, could I make it to my, my, uh, uh, trailer? Midas, I as try luck get would to have it, all of this is happening very near your mad science <laughs> cart. You don't even need to run. Your velocipede, you can see mere steps away, leaning just so tantalizingly close up against your wagon. Then it's velocipede time, baby. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> Midas will uh, run over and jump on to the velocipede and get, get somewhere safe, Christopher. And then rev up the uh, velocipede. Okay, who are you taking off after, Midas? Uh, so there were there there are people who are circling around the tent, and there are people There's who are throwing two Molotov. velocipedes who are just causing chaos and strife throughout the carnival. But one of them took the package from Cranmer and has just taken off in a dead straight line out into the night to get away from the carnival. Okay, I'm going after that one. All right, give me a driving roll. Okie dokie. And don't forget, your Velocipede has superior handling, so add a plus one to that. Yeah. It's a good device. Okay, I got a uh, six. A six, which is a success. Revving the Velocipede engine up as it whirs and whines to life, you take off directly and immediately. Maybe you've tweaked your Velocipede just a little bit, Midas, to help with the uh, initial accelerating uh, from time to time. And this is one such time. As you take off immediately, weaving your way through the carnival, taking the shortcuts that only someone who knows this place like the back of their hand could, you find yourself shooting out through the edges of the carnival. Uh, you're probably gonna wanna flip down your owl eye lenses for this, cause it's dark out there but you can see the headlight of the Velocipede in front of you and you are not that far behind him. You gain some ground making a quick exit through the carnival. You're getting a lot closer, Midas. That is it for you. Next up, 
I think is going to be the other Velocipedes. So here's your chance, Buster. All right. Here we go. Going to take a shot. Well, first you got to interrupt. Athletics. To oh, interrupt okay. their action. Sure. Yep. I aced it. That's a 10. A 10. All right. This is opposed. You keeping it? Yeah. All righty. I got a six. I'll spend a curious ticket to re-roll that. That's worse. That's a five. Uh, I don't think I'm going to be able to beat a 10, a 10 with my limited resources right now, Buster. As the one comes burning back down through the carnival, he follows the route exactly as you thought he would. The path of least resistance right down the main thoroughfare. And Buster, you are waiting for him. You get to interrupt him. What do you want to do? I'm going to take a shot with, All right. uh, with my peacemaker. One of my peacemakers, anyway. Aced it. Aced it. Get a 13. Aced it. <laughs> or, or like a 400. That's fine. Yeah. Um, uh, that's a 20. A 20 is your shooting roll. Yeah. That's a hit with a raise, Buster. Uh, roll damage and add an extra D6 to that one. I would like to add a, a D8 for my performance. Very well. Spending a curious ticket to use our setting rule, sawdust and uh, showmanship. And using your performance die as your raise die. Um, can I get a curious ticket to re-roll that just just for that? You may. Um, okay. Uh, that's an eleven. An eleven. Uh, for your damage roll. Yes. Eleven. Um, 11 is enough damage as this gentleman comes wheeling down the main thoroughfare. Buzz, you step out directly into his path and sight down the barrel of your peacemaker using your arm to steady your tre slightly tremoring hand. Sight him and fire. And as you do, he flips backwards off the bike, which goes careening wildly out of control, flipping end over end until it flies up into the air and hits the ground, exploding in a ball of flame. One of them is down. One of the Velocipedes is down. Fire is still spreading through the carnival, but that was a really good shot, Buzz. Well done. Next up, the other Velocipede rider. Um, he sees what happened to uh, his compatriot and sees you as well, Buzz. And from the other side of the carnival, you hear the revving of the Velocipede as it turns and skids wildly, his feet going down to bear, uh, bear up against the ground as he makes a beeline right for you and is going to try and ram you with his bike. Okay. Uh, that is a seven. Is that going to clear your parry? Uh, it will clear my parry, yes. A seven will clear your parry. As the man on the bike comes running right for you, Buster, you are too distracted by the ball of flame and what you just did to take care of that other Velocipede rider until it's too late. You turn over your shoulder and you see him bearing down at you, and as you try and jump out of the way, you feel the bike make contact with your body. Oof. Oh, that could have been worse. Uh, Buster, 12 damage. Yeah. What is your toughness? Five. Five. That is a hit just shy of two raises, but a hit with one raise. You will be shaken and wounded unless you soak. Uh, I will soak. Spending your second to last, Benny, to soak. Make a vigor roll, Buster. Aced it. Uh, that's a nine. A nine. All right. Uh, a nine is a success with a raise. That is enough to soak the whole bit. You feel the bike make contact with your body, but just very briefly, just the side of you, it clips you as he goes riding by as you try and dive out of the way and you spin off wildly, hitting the ground and tumbling a couple times before staggering back up to your feet. A little bit disoriented, but surprisingly, not much worse for the wear. The third Velocipede Rider, the one who is out in the darkness with the package, 
Midas, you can see him looking back over his shoulder at you as he tries to put on an extra burst of speed to get away from your bike. He is going to make, I'm going to do this a bit figuratively. He's going to make a run roll. Um, this is going to essentially be how much further than one move action he is in front of you now, all right? We'll get to that when it's okay. your turn. He rolls a one. Uh, not <laughs> Aha, very not good. Bad. It seems his velocity does not have the same level of acceleration that yours does. He starts to pull ahead, Midas, but not so much that you are yet worried. That is it for him. Next up, Victor Parrish. Okay. Uh, question real quick. Is my MOM still going from last combat? Um, I mean, what's the duration of it? Uh, the duration is uh, five. So I think that means 30 seconds. So I assume not, but I wanted to check. I'm going to say no, because this is a duel. That makes sense. That makes sense. If you uh, want to activate ammo whammy, you can, but it'll right. take your dual action to do that. Right. Uh, so what I want to do is, uh, can I test him with performance? You can test him with whatever you want. Okay, well, I mean, I guess I'll do perform it. It has to be a non-combat skill that, to do a test though, right? Uh, it can be a comp, you just can't, you can't attack him right now. You can do anything but attack him. Okay. Um, so I a mean, performance roll to do a trick shot, probably not gonna work super well in this instance. No, no, no. Uh, what I was trying to, or what I want to do is basically, I want to pull my gun and do uh, a few uh, spins of it. Something I've learned at the carnival and just uh, t uh, say to him, um, listen, mad dog, I might be hanging around this carnival, but it doesn't mean I've learned nothing while I've been here. And I want to use uh, the gun as a distraction, uh, sort of like kind of reflecting uh, some light towards him and also just getting his eye away from me uh, a little bit. So I want to use it as a distraction. He's doing what I taught him. Yeah, okay. So making Buzz very happy. <laughs> All right. So you're going to okay. razzle dazzle him a little bit. <laughs> Give us a performance roll then, Victor. Okay. Uh, well, that's a four. A four is a success. This is a, this is a pose, though? This is a test, so it will be a pose. Uh, can I use a curious ticket? You can indeed, and now seems like as good a time as any to let you all know that Hosok Tier and the Grim 113, oh, would both like to give a curious ticket to the players. Yeah. So, there we are Thank into you. the pot there. Thank you all, folks. Uh, curious ticket spent. Reroll, Victor. All right, aced it. Uh, so that is a nine, which is good. I will stick with that. A nine. All right. Uh, so that is performance, which I believe is a, uh, spirit based skill or smarts. Uh, I don't know. Um, I it should say next to it on your character sheet. It I should know this too. It doesn't let's, say it on mine. <laughs> let us check. Sorry. Performance <laughs> is spirit. All right. So he's resisting with spirit. Okay, cool. Uh, he aced it. Shit. He also got a nine, Victor. Oh, wow. okay. Uh, you go for your gun and he twitches, but you just kind of hold up a hand and don't look at him. Pull the gun out and just spin it around a bit uh, as you as you say, yeah, you know, you've learned a thing or two as well. Um, you turn to look at him though as you reholster the gun and Mad Dog is just kind of smirking at you, Victor. He does not seem overly impressed by your fancy gun tricks. All right. That is no change, unfortunately, this round, Victor. No bonus or any other cards for you. Celestina, take okay. us home. Uh, I want to send Vika after the the one that ran off with the package. Um, I'll tell you right now, you know how fast uh, Midas's okay. Velocipede goes. There's no way Vika's going to be able to uh, to keep up with them. She's yeah. just not fast okay. enough. Okay, go at like 80 miles an hour. Yeah. <laughs> Jesus. Then uh, I want Vika to go and, and scratch one of these people, these these people who are making me blind in the face. Uh, one of the witches? Yes. All right. Oh. Uh, so uh, make a, you're going to have uh, Vika test them or support you by distracting attack. them? Attack. I want Vika to attack. You want Vika to attack one of the witches. Okay. Yes. We'll see um, how that goes for little old Vika. So make a fighting roll for Vika. Remember, Vika does get a wild die. Ooh. And Vika aced it on both of those die. So. Damn. Vika badass. <laughs> <laughs> Vika got a nine. 
a nine as the fighting roll? Yep. Damn. Vika swoops down out of the sky, uh, going for uh, which witch? The one that uh, blinded you or the one who the fizzled one... her spell because Buster uh, distracted her? <laughs> the one that blinded me. All right, go swooping down for the one that has hurt her mistress and swipes at her face with her claws. Give us a damage roll for Vika. Oh, that's a horrible damage roll. Could I have a curious ticket? Uh, you can. Otherwise, she does no damage. <laughs> she is still a raven, even though she's badass. Oh, she iced it on that one. So five damage. Hey. Five damage uh, is enough to shake. As Vika goes uh, flying down, or wait, no, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, it's not. <laughs> it's one short of being enough to shake. Uh, Vika goes swooping down and scratches at the witch's face and flies up again, but seems to have just done superficial wounds to her, not even really enough to distract her. Although it was a good attempt on Vika's part. So, uh, yes, so. I'm, I want to see if I can cast fear to terrify okay. them away. And I would like to, how many other, I know there are those two and there are a bunch of other things happening, but how many other bad guys are kind of in their vicinity, any? You see the two witches on top, Mad Dog who is locked in a duel with Victor and the other Velocipedes, that's it. Uh, okay. You all took care of the rest. Then uh, I will make this, uh, I will add a plus two power points to make this a medium blast to encompass both of them. Okay. Uh, one, two, three, four. Yeah, I want to try to scare them away. Now, will this be affected by my sight problem? Yes, you will get a minus two to this roll. Okay. But I have a curious ticket, please. You can indeed. Hey, I'm gonna spin this Benny. All right, uh, this Benny. This one specific Benny. Oh my God, I'm gonna do one more Benny. One more Benny, only one remains. There we go, I aced it. Okay, good, good, that good. is seven, seven. Seven is a success, one shy of a raise. So uh, they have to now make a fear roll. Yes. Oh boy, uh, okay, good thing you didn't get a raise. Here we go, uh, fear roll for each of them. Yes. Uh, or, yep, that's a, that's a six. Um, I will spend a curious ticket to re-roll that for the first one. That's an ace on the D8. Uh, one of them is not affected. However, the other one, uh, they rolled a one. Let's spend a curious ticket to re-roll that. Got a seven on uh, the second one. <sighs> So as oh, wow. your as you summon up the dark energies and a humanoid shape of shadow forms itself up out of the ground and rises up in front, screeching at them in a dark, twisted sound wave, the two witches on top of the concession stand look at each other and cackle at you down from above as they continue to do their strange motioning. The magic they're using seems different from yours, Celestina, and you're not quite sure exactly what is coming next but they do not appear to have appear to have been affected by your fear. Well, I'm glad that Vika will own oh, <laughs> trap. <laughs> yeah, next round. Uh, at the end of this turn though, at the end of your turn though, Celestina, uh, you do get a chance to try and shake off the blindness. I believe you make a vigor roll, one moment. Yes, vigor roll is a free action. One vigor roll. Vika roll? Vika roll. Yum, yum. I aced it. I got a seven. Uh, you shake your head frantically, frustrated with your failure in spell casting, trying to shake off the blindness. And somehow, Celestina, whether it was what you did or some external focus, you feel your vision clearing as the blindness subsides. I grin at them. <laughs> Celestina, a four of hearts. Oh, God. Midas. An ace of diamonds. Yeah. Victor, a queen of hearts. Okay. Buster, a seven of diamonds. For Mad Dog, a seven of spades. For the Velocipedes, 
A Joker! Oh, oh. yes. Oh, oh, wait, that's not that for us. Means <laughs> no, it's not. I get a Benny, and hey, so Ken. does Mad Dog. <laughs> oh, come on! And for the witches, a five of spades. Uh. Oh, no. Where did I put his whole cards? Here they are. Whew, oh, if you close. can't find them, then. Uh, no, yeah. I have them. Take I have them. He loses. Um, all right, so uh, the Velocipedes can go at any point. There are two of them remaining. I am, however, going to have them wait. First up is going to be Midas. Ah, oh, damn it. Now I can't act on the Velocipedes or they could... All right, I'm gonna try and do this anyway. I mean, you could you could go on hold and let them act first if you want. Ooh, cat and mouse. <sighs> yeah, because I want to try and do something cool and if it just gets interrupted, it'll it'll just be lame. So I'm, I'm gonna go on hold, just like keep uh, chasing after the Velocipede. So I will also say Midas, you are the only one who has not used your badass moment. Um, yes. You could use that on your opposed interruption roll. All right, well, no, they get that's to interrupt true. automatic. No, sorry, they have a joker, they get to interrupt automatically. Not I know, that. that's what I'm saying. I don't wanna yeah. do something badass and then get interrupted and be like, Mwah. My bad, <laughs> my bad. Yeah. All right, so you're going on hold, Midas. Yeah. Uh, Next up, then, will be Victor. Um, okay, so uh, Victor, after realizing that those fancy gun tricks had no effect, uh, he is going to uh, put his hand back on his gun, on his holster, and uh, say to Mad Dog, All right, listen, Mad Dog, no more fanciness. I'm not going to pull any punches, and I know you ain't either, so last chance to run away, turn tail. What do you say? Are you intimidating him? No, I'm, I'm actually going to use uh, spell casting, but I just kind of wanted to see what he would do. <laughs> I say, nobody's running from this. I'm walking. You're dying. <sighs> okay. I guess I really have to kill this guy. Yeah, make sure you save um, a Benny so you can soak. Oh, wait. You can't yeah. soak a wound in duels. <laughs> it's illegal. You'll go to jail. Um... <laughs> Uh, so I would like to cast Ammo Whammy to prepare for next round. All right, give me a spell casting roll. Something fell out, but that's also good. On the floor, hold on, hold on. Oh, that ace, thank God. Ah, oh, it's got a seven. Uh, so it just goes off for one effect, sadly. All right, so I'm uh, gonna say uh, you are continuing to toy with him, not looking at him, but just sort of pulling your gun out of your holster and spinning it back in, uh, completely relaxed so that you are not triggering him to shoot you, but making him uneasy with how often you're pulling this in and out in order to activate ammo whammy as a rune gr glows on your gun. Which one, Victor? Uh, real quick though, I do want to actually reroll it with a curious ticket. With a curious ticket? See if I can get the raise. You got it. Uh, but all of that still does happen. Uh, I didn't get it. Uh, so, uh, one, one, uh, I will do, <sighs> do I want shooting or damage? This is my plight right now. I think Doesn't I look want... like you're getting any more hole cards, Victor. So how confident are you in the one you got that it's going to be faster than his? Um, well, I can't tell you that cause you're the bad guy. Yeah, that's true. Well, um, I'm just, you know, I'm just your inner monologue. Right. Um, I'm going to go with uh, Loaded for Bear. I'm going to increase the damage type because I want to make sure that he goes down. Uh, you feel the gun get imperce almost imperceptibly heavier as you spin it back down into your holster for what you know to be the final time before you draw it with purpose. Right. Your gun is loaded for Bear, Victor. Next up. Uh, you know what? Let's have the Velocipedes go. They've been good. Um, <laughs> so the one who is in front of you, Midas, looks back over his shoulder again and sees that you're gaining on him. And all at once, he jerks his bike to the side and shoots off in another direction, but timed it in such a way that if you're not careful, your back, your front wheel is going to clip his back wheel and send you careening forward. Um, essentially, I am going to make this an opposed uh, pi driving roll. Okay. Fair? Ooh. All right, so with his Joker, uh, he got a six altogether. Let me spend a curious ticket. 
That is worse. I will spend one of my GM bennies. Ooh. Six is what I got. Okay. Uh, you gotta beat that with your driving. Come on, D4 and driving. Don't fail me now. Well, that's a two. Can I get a curious ticket? Uh, you can. Actually, it's a three because my velocipede. Uh, okay, so that's a six. Do I need to meet it or beat it? Uh, meeting it means there is no change. So a six is all you need, Midas. Okay. As he suddenly swerves to the side, sending you uh, into a, a sh shock uh, state, essentially trying to keep your grip on things. You jerk your bike just slightly to the left at the absolute last minute, so your front wheel zooms around his back wheel and you hear him curse as he continues off now in a separate direction, but you missed going uh, head over heels on your velocipede, so well done, Midas. However, Buster, you got trouble back at the carnival. The one who tried to clip you goes shooting past you and then skids to a stop and turns and faces you and once again revs his engine and takes off at such force that his front wheel comes off the ground, popping a wheelie as he comes towards you just in time for him to slam the front of the bike directly down on you. This too is going to be a handling roll. That's cocked. Oh man, and I wish it wasn't because that looked pretty 80. It's still an eight. Oh, wow. it's meant to be. Uh, that's going to be a 15. Um, <laughs> is that going to, that's going to clear your parry. Uh, you said your parry was five? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so nine. Uh, success with two raises, Buster. You need to soak or else you will t be shaken and take two wounds. Barf. Uh, wait, he just hit my parry with a 15. He, you didn't roll damage yet, right? Correct. Yeah, that's a hit with a raise. Uh, now I roll damage. Thank you very much. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so here we go. Here comes the damage. Good eyes, Buster. That's why they call you Buzz. <laughs> uh, okay, uh, let's see. An extra damage dice. That's 8, 12, 18. Ooh, this is worse. Just take 21. Oh, 21 no. damage. Yeah, hate to uh, see it. So 13, 17. That is a success with four raises, I believe. What a narc, Buzz. <laughs> Uh, yeah, yeah, uh, I'm going to uh, try to soak that with my last Benny. All right, your last Benny, Buster. I know these velocipedes are like mechanical motorcycles, but for some reason, I keep thinking they're giant tricycles. They're not tricycles, they're like I know, but in my head for some with reason. Uh, <laughs> that's a four, so I have a success. Can I get a curious ticket, please? You definitely can. I think theirs probably looks look more like motorcycles, and mine probably looks more like a bike with lots of things on it. <laughs> oh no! Oh no! Oh no! Oh no! 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 Yeah, <sighs> it's a it's a crit fail. Oh, Buster, Buzz, Callahan, a crit fail on your soak roll when you were taking more than three wounds. Um, that's the incapacitation table, my friend. Uh, here we go. Uh, 87. One moment, one moment. Uh, you'd think after as much as this has been happening all of a sudden lately, I would get to know this a little bit better. Um, but I just, I'm so intent on you guys surviving. Um, <laughs> no, uh, make a immediate vigor roll. Okay. In this one, you want to be good. That's a four. And this is going to be modified by your wounds. Uh, oh. You have taken three wounds, essentially. Oh, so that's a one. Can I have a curious ticket, please? Oh, my God. Yes. You fucking scared me. <laughs> what? Oh. When he said it was a one, I didn't realize. I, I thought he had rolled. I thought he'd done another crit fail, which. No, nope, that's he a zero. A face. That's a zero? Yeah. Um... So, but not a critical more... failure. Not right? a critical failure, nope. Okay, well that's good. Um, give me a 2d6 roll. Wait, if you have like any more bennies, you should use them. He doesn't. You don't? Oh no. Yeah, did you not hear me say this is my last benny? Oh <laughs> last no. One. Uh, a total of the 2d6? Yes. 
That's a seven. A seven. Uh, that's one in the guts. Give me a d6 roll. One. One. Buzz. And this makes a whole lot of sense. As the front wheel of the Velocipede comes crashing down on top of you, driving you to the ground, and the rest of the bike drives over you, Buster, you are broken. Your agility is reduced one die type. This is a permanent en uh, injury. You are oh also gosh. bleeding out. <laughs> uh, so you are dying and must make a vigor roll at the start of your turn. Failure means you perish. Uh, like you any failure get... or a crit failure? No, a failure. failure means you okay. perish. You need oh. to get a raise in order to stabilize. Unless someone else is able to stabilize you first, you are on death's door here, Buster. Okay. Did you already go this round, though? No. Uh, he has not yet. Uh, so would... That is it for the Velocipedes. Um, so... I will go now. All right, Midas. Now the velocipede. So the the velocipede like tries to make me clip it, and Midas uh, can't quite turn in time to go past it. So he's just gonna like kind of after going past that kind of turn and then stop and get off the velocipede like quickly, kind of like <laughs> okay, sort of jump off it. And he sees the velocipede going off in the distance, and he's just gonna reach into his his uh, robe and pull out the Buchanan ball. And he starts taking pieces off and just like uh, taking like bits of wire and other things and just adding them onto it. And he modif and he's just modifying these goes on as he walks towards the Velocipede that's going away from him. And he's just gonna like take his arm out and go, let's see a fucking Schwarb do this. And I want to use my badass um, thing. Sounds and I'm good also to me. going to modify my uh, my Buchanan ball to be a heavy weapon. Okay. And to do extra damage. And I would also like, this is like a little bit of a bending of the rules since it's not like an area effect thing, but I want to do add selective two to like not destroy the package. Is that possible? Uh, you know what? Uh, with this, yes, I will. I will say that it is uh, because you are using your badass for this. Why the hell not? That okay, sounds so badass. This is a total of six power points for okay. this this bolt, and so he holds out the Buchanan ball, uh, and uh, I guess I'll roll for it before I say if it does anything cool. All right. Uh, okay, that right now it's a ten. Which, so a success with a raise? I guess it is a success with a raise, yeah. Yeah, it sounds like that. Uh, yeah, it's Is a that ten. with the plus four? The, yeah, because it, okay. it was a six yeah. on the success D10. Success with a raise, Midas. So Midas holds out his hand, and the little, like, uh, soldier, like, lights a match that's, like, bigger than any it's, that you've ever seen before, and it does Yankee Doodle. And when it puts it down, it is like a full artillery cannon like launches off of the back of his arm. It actually tosses Midas back like a couple feet as it fires off. And just a huge like streak of light that almost looks like a laser beam, like fires out from it. And the Buchanan ball just rockets towards the, uh, the velocity. <laughs> and then I will roll 4d4 damage. Uh, 46. 40, 46. Sorry. I was, uh, yeah, I was like, 44? And then it's Did a you... heavy weapon, which I think is not necessary, but might have some effect on the vehicle. I mean, it might. <laughs> uh, I don't think <laughs> it does anything little. in this case. It's mostly because I think it's cooler if it's like launching a heavy weapon at it. I agree with that. <laughs> okay, first two D6s. All right, that's two and a six. So I'm re-rolling it. So that's 10 on the first two D6s. Followed by 13, that's only 14. I'm gonna use a, uh, I'm gonna use a Benny to reroll. A Benny to reroll. Uh, all right, your second to last one, Midas. Yeah. Okay, right now that's eight with one ace. Oh. Okay, so that's 12 and then roll two more. It's already better. Okay, both of those aced. Ooh, goodbye. Uh, so that's 24. Mm. Uh, 25, 27 damage. 
27 damage. Midas, you get blown backwards onto the ground and you sit up just in time to see this bright blue beam of light strike Velocipede and Rider both at once. And with a whoosh, you just see the bike explode and you catch a grisly, horrifying glimpse of the Rider doing the same as it blows up in a ball of flame. And Midas, a flaming uh, object comes streaking towards the air and lands directly at your feet, a small brown paper wrapped parcel lightly on fire. <laughs> I, I, I pat it out as fast as I can. You pat it out and uh, manage to put out the blaze. Uh, well done, Midas. It seems like you are the badass we knew you to be. Next mm. up, Mad Dog. Haha, <laughs> Vic. Looks like, uh, looks like your friends are dying. Well, that sucks. I mean, you can't be anything with dead friends. Where's your pack, Vic? Come on back. Last chance, I promise. I won't kill you if you, uh, just give up now. And he holds up his hands, showing his clearly crossed fingers. It's a taunt roll, Vic. I'm going to spend a Benny to, or uh, sorry, Curious, Curious Ticket to reroll that. Uh, that is a six. I will spend uh, one of Mad Dog's Bennies. There's an ace on the D8. Arts. 15. 15. Oh, okay. Resist with spirit, or sorry, smarts. Oh, why'd it have to be smarts? That's a one and a two. I have one Benny left. I don't think I'm gonna get to use it for pretty much anything else. So, let me use a curious ticket first. Curious ticket. <sighs> yeah. Okay, Benny. Benny, last five. one, Victor. Okay, that's an ace. Just gotta do that. Nope, that's a seven. Seven. Uh, seven yeah. is not enough. That's a success with the raise. He is going to make you vulnerable, Victor. Uh, giving him a plus two on his action against you. And because he got a raise, he also gets to draw an additional whole card from the action deck. Mm, not looking good. Oh, boy. He's got four in hand now. And he smiles just slightly because he knows he's got you right where he wants you. And you see time slows down as he starts to go for his gun. But we'll get to that next round, Vic. Sure. Because right now, it's Buster's turn. Oh God! Oh, no, I no can't. time to get to him. I can't. Buster. I'm sorry. I would have boo boo busted you, but I was far away. Buster, can you give us a vigor roll, please? This is with just a minus three penalty. Correct. That's that's easy. You can do this. You can do this. That's a zero. Well. Can I have a curious ticket? One curious Ooh. ticket. Ooh. Wait, I have a thought. Okay. This might be too late, but didn't we have some plot armor? Can that help somehow? We do have plot armor, actually. Yes, oh. not only plot armor, but super plot armor. Uh, that is a, a good memory there. I myself had forgotten that, but I feel um, like it's super, super relevant right now, right? Yeah. yeah. Since I, mean... I did not remind you of this before the game, and we are not in the same place, so you don't have the visual aid to see it. Buzz, I will say if you want to spend that plot armor now, you will stand up miraculously unharmed. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> super nah. plot armor spent. Wow. And Buster <laughs> suddenly coughs and sits up it wasn't blood that was the slickness all over him, but oil in mud. Somehow he had gotten pushed down into the softness of the ground. And though the bike did crash down and run over him, it seems to have miraculously missed anything vital. It looked bad for Buster, but hey. Buzz, you sit up and you feel fine. Hey, Dom. Yeah. 
Just for our curiosity, could you roll that vigor roll real quick? No, don't do it. Do don't not do it. Don't. Do not do don't it. Do we it. want to find out though, no, right? No, we don't. No, no we, we don't. don't. No. Buster, miraculously <laughs> unhurt due to the plot. You don't want to know what that, that was. The mysterious stranger so graciously <laughs> gifted us last episode. What would you like to do with your turn? Um, he's going to stand up and he's going to take his hat and brush off the dirt and then pull out his shotgun and start walking towards the velocipede and loading the shotgun. And then he's going to, uh, he's going to take a shot. Taking a shot at the velocipede uh, guy that's running away. Yeah. Give us your shot. But before you do, not only have the mysterious strangers in chat unlocked our final tier for the evening, the gift of the Black Judge, they have also unlocked a mystery box draw. Ooh. So let's just reach into the box real quick and see if anything pertinent comes out. Okay. <laughs> wow. <laughs> <laughs> What's happening? Okay. What is it, a red zone now or something? I'm going to give you a choice, Buster. Oh, no. Well, uh... You can unspend that plot armor token and take the result of this card, which is not quite as good as the plot armor token, oh. but keeps the plot armor token in play. Oh, that's interesting. Or I'll put this back in the box and draw another one because I basically told you what it does. <laughs> <laughs> if I, okay, just quickly mechanically, if I take what's on that card, will, does my, am I still going to have the uh, agility knockdown? No. I'll, I'll be honest. It'd be nice to have the plot armor thing, but like that felt pretty plot armory. Yeah, I mean, that's exactly what the plot armor is for. You know what? <laughs> Just because this would be completely redundant right now, I'm going to put this one back in the box then. Okay, okay. And I will redraw another card. This one will go back into the rotation. Uh, this almost never happens on the mystery box, but hey, uh, we're breaking new ground tonight. Uh, and thank you, this chat. This one will come into play when it does. Okay. Thank you very much, chat. All right. All right, make your shot, Buster. Uh, that's a five. Uh, sorry, a that's five. a seven. A seven? Well, yeah, yeah that's a success. Roll All damage. Right. Well, that one went out. Uh, can I get a curious ticket? You may indeed, and I refunded you one from earlier when you were spending all those curious tickets to stay alive when instead all you needed to do was uh, spend plot oh, armor. So Cool, thanks. <laughs> there it is. Wow. <laughs> okay, that's 18. I aced it on all three D6s. Ooh. So that's 18. Bye -bye, bye -bye. Wow. Uh... Twenty-five. The velocipede rider spins again to a stop to look back, smirking over his handiwork as he's ground you into a powder beneath his bike, only to see you stand up, take off your hat, and dust yourself off. And as he is standing or s sitting astride his bike, face in shock, mouth wide open, he only has time to get out a. How in the hell did you, before your shot goes off and silences him forever? No more velocipede riders. And that's how Buster Buzz Callahan gets his revenge. Thank you, Midas. Next up, <laughs> it's going to be the witches. Celestina, uh, both of them look down at you and in unison, they strike what looks like some sort of martial arts pose. However, 
out of each mm. of their outstretched hands shoots a bolt of shining black energy directly at you. First one. Actually, I say that. Let's use a curious ticket to re-roll that. That's, nope. <laughs> one bolt of energy shoots out of one of their hands. A four is a success. I will take it. <laughs> well, that's an ace on the damage die. 14 damage, Celestina. Yachi, machi. What's your toughness? Mm. My toughness is a seven. A seven. So that is going to be a success with a raise. Um, as that shot comes streaking down towards you, it hits you directly in the middle of your torso, Celestina. You would be shaken and take a wound unless you soak. I will soak it. Your last penny to soak. Give us a vigor roll. Make it count. I got a four. Four is a success. Four will soak it. As you jump back, absorbing the force and also sort of taking the arcane energy into your body and dispersing it out through your fingertips. It does nothing to you, Celestina. They're gonna have to witch harder than that. <laughs> Chi harder. Now it's your turn. Uh, I will take that energy and I want to uh, cast two bolts, one at each of them. One at each of them. All right, multi-action penalty. Uh, minus two to each of these spell casting attempts. Make your rolls. No, can I have a curious ticket? You can. Six curious tickets remain. Okay, that first one did not work. So second one then. Aha, I aced it. Okay, uh, that is a five. Uh, five is a hit. Yeah, roll damage, 2d6. I have a curious ticket. You can, five remain. Okay, four damage then. <laughs> four damage, Celestina is not enough damage I to know. Uh, do much at all. It just wings off one of their shoulders and they, they spin back and glare at you. Your other shot. Celestina, no, no the other shot didn't hit. Celestina oh, no. uh, basically goes, and Celestina was here. <laughs> It seems like uh, this is an arcane battle in which neither side can gain the upper hand. Don't forget, Midas, you do have your teamwork card for uh, doubling support totals. I am going oh, yes. to have to dig into another deck. Uh, this is the third round. Oh, right. Victor and Mad Dog will not be getting action cards. Uh, at this round, you will be playing your best hole card, Victor, which is just the one. So we will resolve this at the end of the round. Uh, Celestina, yes. Maybe Midas. we should have held on to whatever that um, that that mystery box. Nah, thing was. don't worry about it. Yeah. Celestina, <laughs> a king of hearts. Finally. Midas, a six of clubs. Buster, a two of clubs. The witches, a queen of clubs. Uh, there aren't many bennies left in play. Midas, would you like to spend a benny to redraw a card? Mm, okay. But I, I guess, so the teamwork thing is for a whole round, right? Yes. So I'll just use it this round and then we can support the hell out of each other. All right, you are using your teamwork card. All support rolls are double. The bonus from all support rolls are doubled this round. Uh, of note, you can support an ally during a duel. That is you cannot, true. You cannot hinder the enemy during a duel. Uh, but you can support. Uh, yes, so... Super, uh, super relevant. Yes. First up <laughs> is going to be Celestina and then the witches. Okay, well, I have one. Uh, how does... How does... Uh, sorry, just trying to find the... Um, if I wanted to use some of uh, uh, Vika's PowerPoints, is that mm -hmm. like an action or something I have nope, to do? No, you just pull them from her. Okay. Well, first of all, I want to use Vika to um, uh, support. Okay. Uh, support you? Yes. So I will have her go and just fly and squawk at them. What skill of yours is she supporting? Spellcasting. Okay. 
so she is flying down towards one of the witches and uh, you, you're wanting what, ath uh, athletics? Yeah, let's do athletics. Okay, uh, give me an athletics roll for Vika. This die is still spinning. Stop spinning, oh my God. Okay, that's a five. <laughs> a five is a success. Vika swoops down and just keeps flying back and forth in front of the witches, distracting them and, and obscuring you from their sight for moments at a time. Uh, you are going to get a plus one on your spell casting roll, Celestina, make okay. that roll. I'm just gonna shoot one bolt at the one who uh, hit me before. Okay. That's a five. Did you want to spend like an extra power point to make it do more damage or? Uh, I, no. Okay, you're running low on uh, fuel here? Yeah. Yeah. Mm, can I have a curious ticket? Yes. Four remain. Oh, there, an ace. Fourteen damage. Fourteen damage. Uh, as Vika swoops down one more time and flies up, one of the witches turns her attention back on you just in time to see a swarm of dark, biting, stinging insects flying Dinner. directly up towards her. Uh, she goes down screaming, batting at the bugs that she cannot kill before they kill her. One witch remains Celestina. Oops. And now she will have her revenge. Mm. She screams out from on top of the concession stand and staring down at you, she leaps into the air and lands in a wide leg stance and brings her hands together and claps them at you. A huge bolt of energy shoots out towards you, Celestina. I'm gonna spend a curious ticket to reroll. That's an ace on the D8. Wow, wow, a second ace. Uh, 17, that was a big different direction. Um, all right, that's a hit with the race, Celestina. Mm -hmm. 46 damage coming your way. 46. 10, 16, 18, 21. Cool. Black, blackjack. <laughs> uh, so seven, uh, 11, 15, 19. That is a uh, hit with three raises, Celestina. You are shaken and take three wounds. You are Hachi. still standing, Machi. but you are badly hurt. You feel things break and splinter inside of you from the blunt force of that, and you are driven backwards to the ground. Your body and mind erupting in pain. That is it for the witch. Next up, Midas. Okay, um, can I, if I jump back on my Velocipede, can I make it close enough to be able to support um, uh, Victor? No. However, if you do something creative and loud with your Velocipede from a distance, I'll allow you to make a support roll <laughs> in that manner. <laughs> okay. Um, all you right. start heading back that way, um, but, but you'll have to support from a distance. Okay, I, I'm I'm going to. Uh... Also, feel free to actually maybe help Celestina. <laughs> yeah, but no way he can get close enough. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, well, there's then... no way I could do anything to help Celestina. You could I mean, attack the witch. I can heal Celestina when I get back, hopefully. Okay, so um, I'm just going to drive back and head back as I go back and just. Can they see me from here? Uh, what do you, just tell me what you want to do. I just want to like pop a big wheelie on the thing and be like, yeah, yes. <laughs> um, sure. Yes, I will say you can get close enough to we do that. We got this. <laughs> and this supports Victor by angering him. <laughs> and I think it's going to support Victor by distracting Mad Dog. Um, right. <laughs> so uh, give me that piloting role, well, Midas. But I would say that this would actually be against the rules of the duel because it is affecting my enemy and not me. No, no, it's not affecting him. He's not testing him. He's he's using a support role. I'm I'm flavoring it as distraction, but it's just going to add a bonus to you. Okay, 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 okay. okay. I'll take Drive. it. I'm going to help he's just making noise that Mad Dog is happening to look at. <laughs> I got eight. Eight. Hey. 
is a success with a raise. That is a support roll that would add a plus two to Victor's um, shooting, I'm assuming, is the skill you're wanting to support. Yeah, yeah, because I'm just trying to like raise his morale, you know? But because of teamwork, <laughs> it will be adding a plus four to Victor's Oof. shooting roll. Now As we're talking. you just come screeching back towards the carnival, you fly back up into a wheelie and just start screaming, yeah! Backlit by the uh, flaming wreckage of the velocipede that you destroyed. And you see Mad Dog's eyes flit over that direction for just an instant, uh, Victor. And that may be just as long as you need. Buster, last thing before the duel concludes. Um, am I close One enough witch. to- oh, One sorry, witch. Oh, sorry, Am, One witch is I, still up. Celestina is down. Am I close enough to hit the witch from where oh, I am? Oh, yeah. You got a gun. All right. Um, I will flip the gun back, and I will yell out, Yo, she bitch. Let's go. And I will shoot. <laughs> is this with your boomstick or just with it your is, peacemaker? It is, it is with my boomstick. With your boomstick. <laughs> well done. Cobalt Blue Steel. This baby was made in Grand Rapids, <laughs> Michigan. Shop smart. Shop Nightlinger Mart. <laughs> that's an ace. That's uh, 11 plus 2. That's a 13. Man, imagine if you had saved your badass moment for this. I now know, you right? have to have two. <laughs> Give me your damage roll with an additional d6 for the raise. Uh, may I performance flavor that? Uh, you may. Uh, Great. Three curious tickets remain. Wow, that's a terrible roll for that. Um, but let's try it. That's a ten. Ten is your damage roll. Yes. The witch on top of the concession stand, seeing that she has sent you sprawling and clinging to life, Celestina, just cackles and raises her hands up and leaps off of the concession stand down towards you, ready to strike with her fists and drive the rest of your life out of your body, but midway towards her arc down towards you, a shot rings out and strikes her full in the body, sending her cartwheeling through the air off to the side, a bloody still mess. You've taken her out, Buster. Well done. And as this chaos rages all around both of you, Victor Parrish, Mad Dog, time slows down. Are you ready to play your card? I only got the one. All right, Victor. Mad Dog reveals his, a Jack of Spades. I got an eight of hearts. An eight of hearts, Victor. You're in luck. None of Mad Dog's other cards beat the eight. Just two twos and three. Pretty shit there. So he doesn't get uh, any extra damage to you. However, you are vulnerable. And he's taken his shot. With a plus two, Mad Dog draws first. Aced on the wild die. Oh no. Eight plus two is 10. That's a hit with the raise, Victor. Sure is. Better make it count, Mad Dog. I'm gonna spend his last penny to re-roll this damage roll. <laughs> <laughs> You're playing with fire, JCC. I'm gonna spend a curious ticket. <laughs> you son of a. <laughs> uh oh. That's a double ace. Oh my god. 24 damage, Victor. What is your toughness? Five. Five. Victor Parrish. Mad Dog draws his gun and fires on you. And before yours has even cleared your holster, you feel warmth 
spreading out from your chest and reaching up. You touch it, and your hand comes away bloody. Can I get a vigor roll, please, from you? <laughs> Modified by minus three. Um, I'd like to use a curious ticket, please. Curious ticket to re-roll. That's a two. A two is a failure. Can I get a 2d6 roll from you, please? We just did this, oh no. Yeah. I should have taken that card. That's a seven. A seven. Give me a 1d6 roll. <laughs> It's the same thing. Hits you in the guts. That's a one. It's exactly the same thing. You're broken, Victor. Your agility is reduced one die type permanently, and you are now bleeding out. You fall to the ground, consciousness fading from your body as Mad Dog holds his gun out. (laughs) I knew it! I knew it! I knew I was faster than you, Parrish. I knew it. And he comes over and stands over you, barely holding on to consciousness. Does it feel bad, Parrish? Huh? Does it feel bad to know that that you've been beat by a mad dog? I fucking kill you. <laughs> I want to watch the life just drain out of your eyes, Vic. I think I owe you that much. And then, as he's standing over you, from behind him, you see a dark hand grasp the back of his neck and lift him by his neck up off the ground, struggling and kicking as he pulls at the hand. The nightman stands behind him, lifting him up above your body, and Nightlinger comes striding forward. Mamalu, attend to our wounded. He comes right up into the face of, oh no, where'd the music go? Of Mad Dog. And stares him directly in the eyes while the Nightman holds him by the neck. Mr. Mad Dog, or whatever your name may be, I tell you this now. Victor Parrish is protected. In fact, everyone here at this carnival is protected. So you go back and you tell your red petals Sue that if she wishes to get to Victor Parrish, then she has to get through Jebediah Nightlinger first. And if that is not a name that she knows, dog, you tell her she best start doing some research. And as the Nightman holds Mad Dog up further above the ground, still choking and grasping at the hand wrapped like iron around his neck. The hooded figure of the Nightman's face looks over towards Nightlinger and Nightlinger says, why don't we give Mr. Dog something to remember this evening by? And the Nightman just nods slowly and reaches out with its other hand and grasps Mad Dog's shooting arm and pulls very gracefully and slowly like a child taking a tinker toy apart. And with a the arm severs and tears from Mad Dog's body and blood rushes out as he screams in bubbling choked pain and slides to the ground and starts crawling frantically away from the nightman. Oh, oh, where's your bravado, Mr. Mad Dog? You seem to have lost it, along with your right arm. Now I'll tell you what, Nightlinger says as he continues to pace behind the crawling Mad Dog. 
I'm gonna have Mama Lou here patch you up just enough so that you can make the long and arduous trip back to your betters and tell them their betters better not ever see them around here again. And everything goes black for you, Victor. An hour or so later, as you all sit in the empty and deserted and carnage-strewn wreckage of the carnival, bandaging up the wounded, including those of you who were wounded. Mama Lou's ministrations help greatly here, along with the assistance of Midas Buchanan's Boo Boo Banisher and any other members of the carnival that are able to render first aid to you, to the patrons of the carnival who got injured in the unfortunate attack. Nightlinger stands in the middle of the crowd of assembled carnival folk. A great wrong has been done here tonight, perpetrated by forces from across this continent that stole into our home and attempted to take a member of our family. This will not stand. No, not one bit. And though we do not seek violence and we do not seek attention beyond what we need to perform, I am declaring open season on any members of the Iron Dragon rail line or anyone who even claims to be from the neighborhood of Shan Fan, if you even suspect they might have the slightest bit of ill intention, you have my full permission to take them to a shadowy corner of the carnival and do with them what you feel is necessary. That, I say, in answer to this grievous attack on all of us. And yes, we are set back by the damage done to our home, but fear not. Once again, our wonder squad has managed to snatch victory from the jaws of defeat. And as everyone looks around confused, Nightlinger walks over to you, Midas, and says, may I have the parcel? Midas pulls it out of his pocket and hands it forward. Uh, Cranmer walks over and says, I, I am so sorry that this misfortune was visited upon your entertaining show this night. I, I feel as though I, I have some measure of responsibility for this, but I, I offer this up with renewed conviction that it belongs here with you all. And Nightlinger gently pulls at the twine on the brown package. And as a silvery light shines up on his face, his yellow eyes gleaming from the shadows underneath his top hat. He looks out at all of his carnival family, and then his gaze lingers on each one of you four. And he says, now, family, I promise you this, this is gonna change everything. And with that, we draw our show to a conclusion this evening. Thank you all Ooh. very much 
for joining us for this first season of our Deadlands campaign, Nightlinger's Traveling Carnival of the Extraordinary. We so very appreciate all of you mysterious strangers joining us on this ride for the entirety of this season. We hope that you will be back for the next season, which will be coming back in the new year. Stay tuned to our social media accounts at Saving Throw Show and at Wildcards RPG on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram for news and updates on when we will be returning. Also, stay tuned for when those new custom edges and options get posted that all of you unlocked on our website so that you can bring them into your home game should you so choose. Before we go, folks, raise up your glass of choice your drink we have one final toast this evening from dj regular now the cloak of night is falling this will be our last goodbye though the carnival is over i will love you till i die mm -hmm. set them up nice and knock them down Beautiful. slightly prescient words this evening dj regular and on that note, a big, big thanks to our mods for helping us out in chat and running yeah. things from behind the scene, helping to give Dom a break so that he can focus on being uh, that golden-toned cowboy bard, Buster Buzz Callahan. This was touch and go, folks. Things got pretty dangerous there for a moment, but you all persevered. You all proved to be the badasses that we know you are, and I am very excited to see what direction your characters follow when we come back for our new season. We hope that you won't go too far from us, you mysterious strangers. We hope you'll spread the word. You can always use the hashtag WildCardsRPG to get the word out and bring more mysterious strangers into the fold to see what new dangers and challenges lie in wait for our carnies. But we've made you wait long enough all of you who are struggling to stay awake to see who the winner is of tonight's giveaway dom are we ready to select a winner and announce we are and the Should winner we drum roll? yes sure the winner is hopefully they're in chat hosok tear <gasps> hosok tear you are the winner of tonight's giveaway for the Norse Foundry Draugr dice. Is Hosek Tear in chat? Here. Yes. 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 Congratulations, nice. Hosek Tear. Congrats. Congrats. Very jealous of you. We Big will winner. be getting in touch with you to get your information and see how best to get your prize to you. But congratulations, Hosek Tear. And thank you so much to everyone who entered. Uh, who knows? Perhaps the, the fallow field of Norse Foundry may soon be bearing uh, some some new wild cards related fruit in the future. Uh, again, another good reason to stay tuned to our social media accounts. Oh man, this has been quite a ride and we have kept you all for quite a while. Unless there's anything else that anyone has to say. Well, I mean, I've got one more thing to say. Join us on Sunday mm -hmm. uh, for the, this will be the premiere. It got yes. delayed from last weekend. This is the premiere of the new new Pantheon season with GM Stephen Pope and a super cool cast of players that we have been revealing on our socials. Definitely check them out. 4 p.m. Pacific time. 4 p.m. Pacific time. Yes. 7 p.m. Eastern Pacific time. time. Join us for that. Dom's going to be running things from behind the scenes. Say mm -hmm. hi to him in chat and tune in for a really fun new show with really fun new players. Also, we got another new show coming just down the pipeline. Who wants to tell us about that? I will, unless one of the cast members wants to talk about it. I'll <laughs> say a little bit. Okay. Uh, we, on Monday, we're premiering our new show. Uh, have we said like info about it? I can't remember. Yes. Yeah, we, uh, we, yes. Yeah. we have, yeah. We're premiering Dice X Machina which is going to be uh, set in the world of Theros, the Magic the Gathering setting. And it uh, features just a really great cast, a lot of members of the Broken Pact, and um, and uh, uh, Danielle- uh, Radford. What was her? Yes. Uh, joining us as a new member and a GM, uh, Riley Silverman. And it's going to be really, really great. <laughs> it's really late. Excuse him. Listen, yeah, it's yeah. late Tired and they have expended everybody. a lot of energy. But it's going to be really exciting. It's yes, gonna be yeah. it's fun. going to be very cool. Check it out on Monday. Uh, what time is that going up on Monday night? That's 8, 8 p.m. 8, 8 p.m. Pacific, Pacific time. time. 
Oh, what a great time. Uh, and, thank you. Yes, this would be a, a great place to start with New Pantheon. This is a whole new whole new characters, a whole new system, uh, brand new story. Everything, every, brand new story. Perfect place to start with New Pantheon. It's late, mysterious yep. strangers, and you're tired. You're wandering through the weird west. It takes a toll on you, so why don't you find a, a nice inn or saloon some place with the room where you can hole up for the long dark winter and join us on the other side of 2020 when we return to ride the trails of the weird west and nightlinger's traveling carnival of the extraordinary will go on until then we won't see you except for in your dreams and we leave you with finger guns! Dream bullets! Dream bullets! Oh, dream bullets! That's good. <laughs> <laughs>